All right, hello, hello, hello. How's everybody doing there? How's it going there, Alistair? How are you? How are you? Good morning, good morning. How's it going there, Zerfin? How are you? How's everybody doing? Again, trying to get um, affiliate on Twitch, so if you don't mind also watching me there, I need uh, to average three concurrent viewers at a time. I've got the uh, followers now, so that's good. I appreciate everybody for that. Thank you much. Congratulations to the community favorites for the Build Challenge, Juliet, Alistair, and Mr. G. Congratulations, congratulations. All right, so we're going to be working on the locomotive systems today. How's it going there, Citrus? Good to see you. I uh, had a good multiplayer stream with everybody yesterday. Thank you to everybody who joined. Alistair, Mr. G, Erasmus, uh, who else was in there? Sergeant was in there. So I uh, thank everybody who was in there. That was uh, fun yesterday. That was a good time. Got some good mining going. Uh, most of the vehicles, I fixed up some of the stuff. Worked a little bit last night on trying to tune some stuff up. But we're going to work on some train stuff today. So I want to get this uh, new train system started here so we can use some things. Did a little bit of, uh, made a two-axle dolly there to try to play with that a little bit. Fixed up some of the issues with the build. Yeah, we didn't just earn four grand like with gold. We earned uh, <laughs> some good money on that one, so that was good. So here is the DE2. So what I'm trying to do is make a standardized system that I can use in a bunch of different uh, vehicles. And so what I think I'm going to do is there'll be a conversion element of it where you take in the controls and you convert it. And that way... Uh, you know, you can use a different control scheme and it will still work. Uh, oftentimes you get no problem where, you know, because you're going to have different switches and buttons. For example, if I was going to make a DH4, uh, you know, let's say another, let's say this is going to be diesel electric. So let's say I made another diesel electric, you know, the control scheme would be different. And then the but the uh, numbers would be all different. So what we'll do is put it into a uh, control converter that will convert things to what they need to be. So you'll take it in from the panels, and then it will run the system from that. I think that's a smart idea to do. So these IRL are diesel electric. So I'm going to try to do that. Um, and I, what I was thinking is there's a sander function where the sander will go drop sand on the rails uh, for traction. So if you get wheel slip, you'll get that. What I think I'm going to do is make it diesel electric. And then if you get wheel slip, it will uh, essentially attach the diesel directly to the drive system as well, and that will give it extra, uh, you know, grip. Essentially, hopefully, we'll see how that works out. But I'd like to make diesel electric. So presently, this is the motor. Let's see. Let's count cylinders here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have a six cylinder in here. I'm trying to make diesel electric here. So I need to. Um, let's see how I want to rerun this. So, I haven't completely decided on how I want to do this. So I think what we'll do is, um, we're not going to really see in here anyway, so let's uh, start chopping a little bit. That would be an 8 banger. So let's make it a 12. And we'll make it radial. Saw a post this morning I was looking at. Um, I still don't understand how people are having problems pumping liquids, but they are. You know, somebody's freaking out that they can't um, that they can't get their submarine to uh, pump the water out of it. I don't understand the problem with that. I was gonna make. I started making a tutorial series for that. I'll try to do it. The person said they watched a bunch of tutorials, but the real question is, did they watch any updated tutorials? They watched stuff from three years ago that has no application to today either. So. Never know, so I'll have to make some new tutorials at some point. Let's see. Um, probably a mid gen, I'd say. You need a big ass motor for a large gen to run. That's right on the money, isn't it? Shiza. Uh, let's go you like that. <laughs> what is on this wall? I think this is a double thick wall. No, it isn't. Shit. 
Um, that would have been too easy, huh? Would have been too damn easy. Uh, we can put it in here. So large is most, um, the large is most efficient. So theoretically we could run that and then try to down gear it. Mass I don't care about too much in a loco. I don't think it's gonna fit at all, is it? Now it's too big to fit. All right, so that's fine, we'll put a meat in there. All right, so there's the gen. go ahead and we'll run a sent single system down so I just going I want to get the drivetrain in that way I can start them working on the microcontroller and I know where to hook everything up so. So I might make this a beefcake. Let's make this a beefcake motor. Um, let's do that. Let's make it absolutely beefcake. Um, I think that's going to be the way to do it. And then we'll run it really, really low RPS. I think that's probably a better way. down one okay not that we have to worry about center of gravity or anything with the train seeing it's glued to the rails especially you know that seems like that was a balancing pass they went through and we used to be able to derail uh, with you know a little bit of rotation and they took that out you know I would say it's probably because there were complaints that people kept derailing you know probably that they were going too fast but um, you know they wanted so they complained about it and then I think they put in a uh, they rebalanced it so that you pretty much it's nearly impossible to derail now because I you know tried to bunch of the pivots and everything else will pick the whole train up before it will uh, derail it so can't really do that. All right, so that's uh, plumbed in for the gen there, and then we can gear as necessary. I can pull up through the wall here. Uh, what I might do is just preemptively do that. Let's preemptively do that. You know, it's, it's one of those things that derailing sounds cool. You know, it's a cool feature, but then you get a bunch of people who have problems with derailing, and so then they have to go back and balance it. You know, it's one of those issues. You won't know how it how it should be until they uh, until you test it all out, you know. Oh, fuck. Got color swap on right off the bat. That's gross. That is gross. Uh, let's do that. All right, good. All right, so there we've got a um, the gen plugged in. Let's go ahead and I will edit the... Modular engine tutorial from last November. This is from the Stormworks Basics tutorial. Pretty much use this as the basis of everything now and pretty much just tune off of it. So it's just gonna be the engine controller. I'm trying to make it again so that it's um it's set up to so I can put it in a bunch of different vehicles, so I'm trying to think of ways to do that system that that just operates well. So let's go ahead and we're gonna just tear this microcontroller apart and get this set up for our generator. So uh, currently the way it runs is since it's for a car, two will operate the, um, you know, WS of the car, of the seat will operate the throttle and so what we can do is if we go down to the alternator here, the alternator is taking the battery, it's given a constant value of one. And if we go plug that in here, now what we're doing is we're telling, the pit is sending up its signal and it's gonna 
put it in here as x. x is going to multiply by uh, z. x is going to multiply by z, which is the max value. So when the PID is at a value of 1, it's going to give us a max of 15. When uh, it's idle, it's going to give us a value of 3.5. So pretty simple on that. It's pretty much what I do with all my gens now is just run them off of this. And then that can go. Um, actually, let's see. Where did I go in that? That is now clutch. So if, uh, the other thing is clutch application on a car, of course. You don't want to go until you press down the W key. You don't need that anymore. So let's see. So pretty much if the, um, if the RPS is greater than 3.5, we should start to clutch in to make power generation. And so you can just take that WS element right out there. That fixes that. A lot of this ends up being the same. Some of this I left. The only thing I don't like about this this microcontroller is that I left all these tails diagonal for ease of reading for newbies and kind of I like lines straight up and down. So I'm gonna move a bunch of stuff around to get my lines where I like them. That will cause me aneurysms and pain. All right, and then we'll change this. Uh, so what I want to do is essentially, uh, we don't need the seat. Gotta, uh, let me let me clean through it first before I start ripping. So right here is the six off the seat was running that. We'll get rid of that. So the seat's going to change to, let's see what we want. Um, panels. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this here. This is Stormarks. If you ever need to know what uh, what a game is, you can look. It's um, it shows it right on the video. Let's really catch up real quick here on chat. How's it going there, JP Jenkins? How are you? Yeah, it wouldn't go with a D2, though. Maybe I'll make, probably, you know, I've been playing some D-Rail Valley, so if I get to the DE6, which, uh, you know, I assume I will. Not D6, yeah, D6. I'll probably do that in the slug at some point. All right. That's all right there, uh, a &S. Appreciate that. All right, so that's the panels. Let's see. We'll work on that. So what I want to do is put in a panel conversion. So essentially, let's say I make five different locomotives. They have five different sets of panels. It's a pain in the ass to go through and set up all the buttons the way you want. So I might be doing this on a bunch of builds now for standard stuff. And so what you essentially do is you put it through, you would read it, and then you'd write it out on different channels. And that way, you know, you can connect this. You can take this micro, it'll connect it, and you have to change all the numbers. You have to put in the the conversions here essentially so might do that so that is uh, the other thing too is cool and pump I'm not running anymore and radiator fan we'll see how I do the cooling in this I haven't decided yet so we'll hang on to that for now All right so start plumbing this in and then I'll figure it out uh, let's It'll help me kind of plumb it in to know what I want to do next. So let's go ahead and we'll do engine. And let's start putting the actual engine parts on here. All right, we don't need alternators because we are... Um, we don't need alternators because we are uh, going to be running strict generation on this. We could, but we don't need it. So that's going to go on there. And then fuel tank should be here. So let's put those in. tanks here.
little bit of angle to its dangle there. Um, I think that'll be all right. That gives a little bit of an angle there. I'm just gonna delete these. I I, I try to use this one single color on the on, so all the interior of the blocks the same, and then paint the, just the facade that needs it. But sometimes I fall down on that, and it and it bothers me. I'll go back and fix them. All right, there we go, and then we'll go. Do a big old banger of a fuel tank in this. That is the bottom of the heat sink. Okay. And I forget how much the real one has in it for fuel. I have to look. The wiki. Okay. So there's fuel. And I can't remember what side the pipe is on. It might be dual side. It might be actually a split tank. Let's see. And I think it's red in game is the um, port color. Alright, there we go. I seal this up so it doesn't uh, leak. Alright, so we should get a good value off of that. Curious what's going to go on Wednesday, what bugs are going to be fixed. I'd like to see it. That's the nice thing. Like, some people cry about a weekly update. I love a weekly update just for that. It's kind of cool to see what, what goes on, you know. What gets changed. You know, it might, you know, there are plenty that aren't exciting to me, but still... Now it shows that they're working on stuff, which I like. Uh, the feed meter. Right, and then for now, I'm just going to put a quick dial on there, and we'll see what the cap is on this. We should have plenty of fuel in here. Knock the music down just a little bit. I've got the I've got the head kick and uh, synth wave on today. Keep you motivated. That's good. Thirty three hundred liters. That's good. We like it. All right, that's plenty. All right, so that is the fool on that. So we got some fuel now. So that will tell me where I need to plumb to. So plumb toward the rear here, I think. Let's go ahead and get off Simiotri. Let's take a Majo engine, full manifold. Here we go. Right, and then we'll cut to here. Oh, Shiza. Come on. Click where I click where I want, not where I actually clicked. Oh my god. I'm gonna delete that nine million times, I know it. Here we go. Alright, where are we at here? Did I color the right color? Probably not. Try not to hit Control S because of the known issue with that. All right, right there. All right, let's go. Yeah, I'm hoping they fix Control S. Um, they've been pretty good that if they put something in the community to, like not really thrilled about, they at least kind of address it. You know, that's I think that should be an easy like yep. We didn't think of that. Yep, fix it. Put it as an option or put it as a key bindable change or, you know, because I don't think having a key bind for a save is all that important. Like, there are some things that it's nice to have a quick command. I don't use too many quick commands. I'm not in that much of a rush, but yeah, I think that one's pretty, pretty uh, negligible for the amount of pain it's causing people at the moment. Um, let's just put a liquid 
leaf valve on there. Might as well. Doesn't hurt anything. All right, that's on. I'll vent these tanks somewhere. Probably just vent it right here. It's fine. Do dual venting. Get space there. Let's see how much space we got. Do a gas relief valve. This is all you have to do to, to vent your gas tanks. I answered a bunch of questions from uh, people in usually Steam this week of uh, like, how do I vent my tanks? A, all, all a gas relief valve does is it is a filter that only allows gas through. That's it. It allows gas through. That's it. Um, and so you put that on and only gas can come out. And then you put a fluid port in the end. The guy who was asking this who was having problems did not put a fluid port on it so it was doing nothing you know, so that's all you have to do literally to vent your tanks is it's going to try to equalize with whatever volume it's in so in this case it's out in the atmosphere so it's going to try to equalize with the atmosphere so whatever the um whatever the pressure is at atmospheric pressure which should be one atmosphere at standard atmosphere standard atmospheric pressure should try to equalize the tank to one atmosphere so it's going to depressurize your tank. You know, somebody told them to. They were, they, you know, the problem was top of square getting conflated. Trying to fill tanks was getting, or empty tanks for, you know, tankerage was getting conflated with just making sure your your engines were running. And so, you know, people were pressurizing tanks and everything else. Then they were like, oh, my fuel, my my uh, fuel burn rates are too high. It's like, yeah, because you're blowing fuel into the intake of your engine. So. Pretty much just need to vent your tank there. Simple. All right, we'll dress that bump, these bumpers up later here. Not really bumpers, but. All right, there we go. All right, so tanks are ventilated and plumbed right now. All right, that's good. Um, I want a super on this for air. So let's see. Let me read some chat here. We got a bunch of chat. What is this emoji? Thank you. Thank you for all the emojis. Uh, no mining today. Nope. Yeah, we'll do a next multiplayer stream. I might work on some of the uh, builds, but that's probably about it, JP. Uh, fish should spawn everywhere. Yep, as long as you have fish on and populated, they should spawn everywhere. So, like, even if you're pretty shallow, like, you should be able to walk in the water. And uh, you should be able to cast from, you can cast from the shore and get them. I don't, I don't know about sonar detecting. Oh. Yeah, it's nice, uh, the thermite, to get the, um, to get the uh, supercharged back. You know, that was, that was, uh, you know, that certainly caused problems. You know, it was, um, I'm glad they fixed it in a reasonable amount of time. You know, you know, I, I think the best thing to do is, you know, in a calm, collective manner, just go to where they've asked us to fill up bug reports. You know, there are bug, um, if you, I put it on the, um, on the channel in the Discord for bug reports. I put on the most populated one for the Control S. Likely, you know, they that's the easiest way for them to check it. Like some people are just like they'll they'll put in a complaint or a like, oh, you know, I'm having problems with this and they'll put it right in the weekly discussions. And it's like the correct place for it is just stick it in, um, you know, stick it where they've asked it, because like if you go through the bug tracker, it's easy for them to get rid of fluff. It's easy for them to, uh, you know, go through what needs to be worked on. And they can address it. They can move duplicates. Um, you know that. You know some people. I don't know. They have this weird thought that they'll go through. Re they'll just search every Reddit thread ever created for the game. They'll search every Steam thread created for the game, and they'll somehow divine out what needs to be fixed. It's like no. Every company has some sort of, you know, place that they look for you to, 
go to report bugs. For example, Tarkov has this. Every place has it where you're supposed to report your bugs. And so you go there, and that's where they'll they'll take them. So it's, you know, um, there's one right now. Last I checked, it had like five stars on it for the Control S. So that's likely, you know, going to be something that, you know, hopefully they'll at least address this Wednesday. But that's something like, the other thing too is to think about if it doesn't require a balancing pass, if it doesn't require a ton of rework, it's probably something that can be done pretty quickly. So, like, this is just a control S issue. It's a keybind issue. It should be pretty quick to be like, oh, th you know, we didn't think about this. This was an unintended consequence. We'll fix it. Um, and then, you know, they, we've got our new, you know, they'll, they'll change the keybind somehow. I don't know how, what they're going to do, whether they'll be like, you know, we'll just get rid of it or we'll... Um, you know, we'll make it so you can change it to whatever you want. You want to put it on something else? Be my guest. Or they'll be just be like, yeah, we just, you know, I don't think we need that key bind. So um, something like that. You know, other things take some time. It was like sink and ship community was harping on sink and ships for a long time because that's important to them. So that makes sense. But again, you got to think that it takes them some time to because that requires a balancing pass. As they change that, you know, they can't go back to the way it was because it caused problems with other issues. And so. Got to go back and have a balancing pass. So, but you know the superchargers. You know I think that was just an error. They didn't think they didn't think that through. Uh, they didn't understand that some of the builds have you know require superchargers, and then they had to go back and fix that. So I'm glad it's back. The miners, for example, uh, couldn't drill very effectively until that was fixed. It got fixed, and now they're working. So I'm glad they got that fixed in a reasonable amount of time. Uh, no multiplayer today, probably. Nope. I got a lot of builds to work on. I got to fix builds from yesterday. I want to get the train systems going, so a lot of that. Yes, yep. I know you're David. Yep. Yep, yep. How's it going there? Anto Joseph. How are you? How are you? All right, good. So that is, uh, we got air in there. We've got full. We're going to need exhaust, which um, this pipe is fake. I'll I'd try to decide if I want to do a regular pipe. I might XML something. I don't know. Could just uh, exhaust out the bottom. I'll figure something out. So we'll do exhaust on this. I might just, let's do this. Let's put something in here for now. And then I'll uh, decide what I want later and we can dress it. I just put a fake pipe on there that I liked. For the time being um, let's just quickly grab something to put on there until I figure out what I want that's ugly that's not gonna stay but we'll figure out what I want to do XML or something I just want to be able to run the engine up do tests so I find the cat is a lot easier to put on now. With the uh, with the sticky rotation. All right, let's plumb this. Starters. Bat. Let's get a battery in there. Seeing that this is all about um, electrical generation. Again, I don't use huge batteries like I use. I just use smalls usually. I'm going to put a couple meads on this just to have a little bit of um, leeway on the system and add a little weight anyway. Not that we need the weight, but, um, you know, because this, is a, this one is going to be electric drive with the diesel gen on it. Alternator. Don't need alternators. Coolant pump. Don't need coolant pump. Kluch. Fuel manifold, I just put that on, that's there. This is the air manifold right there, and that is our PS. That's gonna be engine, that then panels, uh, we have panels, so I need to look for the starter button. I think these are pretty good where they're at so far. Let me, I gotta run through these panels, get them connected. You know, we're running throttles for this. So the, is Tarkov free? No, Tarkov is they changed the way Tarkov is priced uh, end of year. Uh, it opened up Tarkov Band Tracker first. No. 
Tarkov is not free. Tarkov is, uh... Let's see what Tarkov is. I don't even know what it costs now. Because it used to be, um... Used to have different packages. They still have different packages. But, um... Base standard edition is 35, and then um, I don't know if they don't do a, they don't do the up packages anymore. I don't think for 35. Let's see. So what are these? That's gonna be fan for lights. All right. All right. So these are lighting: rear light, cabin light, rear light, cabin. This is what are you? You are gonna be horn. Okay. So this is gonna be accessories. So that will go through a different panel. And then I want to kind of get the panel set up that need to be in here. So that's going to be, what are those again? Electrics and then something else. I forget. This here is fuel shut off. And then, so I'm trying to put the ones that need to be on here on here. What's that? That's sander. And then the starter should be over here on this panel. I haven't even worked on this panel yet. So let's get this one going. I'll bring up the wiki. DE2. Shunter. How's it going there, Turtle Man? How are you? How's it going there, Niv? How are you? Good to see you, Niv. What, do, what equipment is best to put on there? Um, so you're starting career. You want to start with a small career boat. Um, you know, try to make your new stuff not too complicated. Just make it effective because you're going to want to move on to the next build, especially if you're just starting. You tend to go through your builds pretty fast because you get better at it. And you realize you're going to have to rebuild a lot. Like, and So uh, make a simple starter boat that you can run and that can do rescues with because you're going to want to move on to the next one. How's it going, Turtle Man? I said hello. How's it going, Rasmus? Yep, yeah, multiplayer is fun. Thank you guys for joining. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed that. All right, let's look at the Vicky and pictures here. Uh, I don't want to have to open up the game to see what all the buttons do. Shit. Um... We got starter. We got, yeah... Some of those, I can go back through, um, I can go back through some of them. Let's see. I think what I'll do is cut here. Uh, let's see what I want to do here. Let's do that for now, and then... God damn it, I got uh, symmetry on. That's not going to help me. Okay. I think we'll do this. I need to get a starter on here. Alright, there we go. Uh, let me, I'm gonna actually t trying to take as many colors out of the real one as I can to run that. So we get effective colors here. And then I can run those. So what is this? This is uh, 146, 161, 158. So let's do that. 146. 161. 158. Alright, there we go. So that will go like that. They do stick out in the game, but I can't make them do that, really. Um, okay. Be good, and then let's just do you there. Done. Uh, that's too bright. Let's go. Dip, 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 dip. There we go. All right. All right, and then they should have one, two, three, five with a space. One, two, three, 
five with the space. Okay. And they're flips, so let's go. I have to look. I'll have to look in Derail Valley to see what they are supposed to be. I can't remember all of them, and I want to get them in order as well. So. Yep, multiplayer is a lot of fun. Finally got the vehicles kind of where I needed to. I figured out what was up with that one uh, where the vehicle had the... It was the... I had put uh, back when I was first working on the miner. Oh, my God. Can I click on the right panel here to save my life? The um, It was the front tires. I had put the brake on just to give me some braking, and that's all it was. was I had left that on, so I had to, I had to stop that. Upgrade. See, I can't go in front of the throttle for that, so it's kind of got to be here. Okay. So, let me see. Can I move those forward? I can't. Okay. That's the only benefit when you can't do something is it kind of informs what you have to do. So that's there. Hmm, I would love to put it here, but I can't put it in front of the throttle. Um, I could angle the throttle sideways, but I don't want to. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Try to side. Best way to do it here. I'll leave it like that for now. I might change it. All right. Oh, you st thief, thief. How's it going there, Sergeant? How are you? All right, excellent. Let's see. All right, so I want to get this running, so we kind of got to get going in there. So let's go grab you. Let's see. All right, let's do this as an input. Let's do that as key. All right. That's now a key. And so it does fuel cutoff. So what I want to do here is we're going to take the key. We're going to do an up-down counter. We will go enabled. We'll do 0 to 1. 1 on the increment. That will go to up. And we'll just um, you just you just hold the starter and then um, you let go of it. So so that's gonna go um, threshold of one. That will go to all of these there. That will go like that. All right, so that will run that. And then there's a fuel cutoff button that will end up uh, shutting this off. So keep that in mind later. All right, good. that does that. So I can hook that up. Fuel cutoff should go in here, so right there. This should be fuel cutoff right here. Yep, right there. All right, we'll figure that out later. Those are doors. All right, let's do. Uh, da -da -da -da, shit. Yeah, I'm trying to see. Um, I'm gonna have to feed that out too. For a relay. It's all right. We can do that later. Our uh, character. I'm trying to get the system up and running. So I'm trying to think like what's important at the moment. Cooling will come later. We'll work on that. I'll just put, punch a hole somewhere in here in the bottom probably, and then I'll put a radiator inside. 
All right, we got all that. Let's see. We have the gen there. And then we want the drive to be will be shuttle drive off this. So, we'll probably do a drive systems panel. And then the generator will just run automatically. So we'll do a drive systems panel, so let's work on that. Because it's going to be a shuttle drive off of the um, reverser. So try to segregate the system so that if I want to put this control unit on a different loco, it's pretty easy. So we need to have the panel in there, the throttle in there. Panel and throttle, it needs to run out to the electric motor. So, And then it needs to run back to the panel. Okay. So let's start doing that. So we have panel... See, uh, number input. And that will go number output to motors. Alright, let's work this. Alright, so the throttle come in. I'll set the limit in the throttle in the throttle itself. Let's see. So we want to run. All right, let's look at the panel real quick. So these two are going to come here. So because of this, uh, this can be one. That will be two, and this will be eleven. One, two, and eleven. So one, two, and eleven. Let's hook that up. I'll go back to there. All right, one, two, and 11. So one is going to be forward. All right. So let's see. Um, all right, so let's do function. So if it is switched to, oh, let's see. All right, we'll do cascade on this, like that. That will be a negative X. That will go there, that will go there. Okay. All right, so I'll keep them separate so you can see what I'm doing here. So essentially what's going to happen is uh, if if the reverser is in neutral, it's not going to send any signal to the electric motors. If the reverser is um, in forward, it's going to send a positive signal to the electric motors to go forward. If it's uh, in if the reverser is in reverse, it's going to send the negative signal. And the throttle is always going to send a positive signal. So... That should work, um, and then we'll figure out. So what we want to do here is let's get this set up here for the reverser position. So uh, if we read a one, try to think here. Best way to do this. Yeah, the readout's going to be different, but that's fine. So if uh, this will be regular clicks, so let's do pulse. I want a single tick per push. Single click per push is better. Single tick. All right, there we go. And then if we press um, 11. We'll go down. And then what do we want? We want zero. We'll do negative one. And then we'll do one. There we go. All right, good. So that will do that. That'll be the um, the reverser there. And then we need to read out the thresholds for this. So let's do that. So we have negative one.
So if it's negative one, that is gonna be reverse. So reverse is gonna be negative. So negative one would go here. Okay, positive one is gonna go here and then zero is gonna put us in the zero position there. All right, good. Like that. All right, and that's good. So that works the reverser. And then to read out, it's going to read out a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and we need to get ready for this here. I'm moving way down too far south. There we go. So for the for the for the colors here, it is going to be let's see. So I need a right and on off. And we'll just write uh, it's channel two through, and it's going to be, uh, I believe it's, what is it, 10 on there? I thought it was eight. Let me check it. I think it's eight. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Okay, it's eight. I hope I updated it. Okay. <laughs> going to be upset. All right, uh, so two is forward. So if we go forward, which is one, that will do channel two. Um, if we do negative one, we'll skip one and no, nope, skip one. No, neutral is going to be so. If this is zero, so neutral position is going to read two off that, and then negative will be two more past that. So that will be like that. That'll read up the panel. That will show our reverser position. Motors should be able to be hooked up. That is the drive system. We can probably, let's plumb that all in and then we can probably just go look at it real quick. So this is gonna be throttle right there. This is gonna be motors. Goes out to the motors if I can ever find them. There we go. Up, oh, up, oh, there's control S for me. Go away control S, nobody likes you. You slowed the whole game down too when you do that. Don't like it, thank you. All right, good, so that's done. Now let's see. Pause it. I need to come off. Those are good. All right. So let's give that a quick little play. And make sure infinite electricity is on. Let's check some chat here. All right. Let's go ahead and go in. All right. So we're in neutral. Burn forward. We're in neutral. We're in reverse. All right, there we go. That works how I want it. Beautiful. And then um, should do nothing. And then we go forward. And here we go. So we're going forward. That's backwards, so that needs to be fixed. But fix. We'll flip that around here. No, that's correct. I don't know why it's being the way it is. All right, this is going to go. Let's try. I think one is. Let me. Let's, we'll run the numbers here. Let's make this reasonably fast, actually. We want a little bit fast. Um, 15 is probably good. There you are. All right. Why is the handle gone? because I set the numbers wrong, because I did it too fast. And so I put the start value as one. There we go. So it's definitely not gonna be that. So the thing with electric motors that you need to understand is they go up to 19 RPS. That's it, they go up to 19 RPS. The difference with, the, with this is how fast they get there. Now, if you have too much load, they're never gonna get to their max value. But if you, um, you know, if you, so for example, like somebody was complaining that the Patway uh, was not fast enough. It will go 50 miles an hour regardless. The difference is that if you start, if you put 0.1 to your motors, it's going to take longer for the motor to get up to 19 RPS, which with that tire diameter or circumference, I keep saying diameter, circumference is better um, is the accurate way to say it. But uh, based on the tire circumference, 19 RPS is going to be a different number of speeds. If you always go 19 RPS and you have a set uh, tire circumference, it's always going to go the max speed. You're not going to be able to get any more speed out of it. 
Uh, but what you can change is the rate of acceleration. And so this is rate of acceleration. So like we did 0.2, negative 0.2. You know, eventually we get to 19 RPS and it would cap out our speed. And that's how I want this. This is how it works. You know, you would go, you would set, start giving it some electricity. If we go full, right, it should keep accelerating us. Now, depending on the load, it might not. So as you can see, we probably tell it looks like we're accelerating here. All right, so the way you do it is you then take the throttle off. I'm going to actually increase the speed on that. Fuck, this is not set up right. Let's set it up right. I'll put a speed on there real quick. So this should be zero and then the max value. And let's go up uh, 50%. It should be pretty, uh, pretty fast, actually. Come on. Linear, there we go. Just quickly get a speed off this so I can kind of play and work with this. Okay, and then we'll go right to this dial there. So you're eventually gonna hit that top speed. So if I looked at the circumference of these uh, wheels, I can tell what the top speed's gonna be. You know, so the way it works is you like that. So you see, we're gonna keep accelerating. Now, eventually we might hit a load limit where the motor can only push so much load and then it's going to not get out to the top speed. Yeah. How's it going there, Oscar? How are you? How's it going there, Cheesecake? How are you, how are you? Cheesecake, Captain's favorite for Juliet. So you see, we're still accelerating here, even though we're at point two. Again, point two is the rate of acceleration, essentially. So if we took the tire diameter and we um, circumference, if we take the tire circumference, we can figure out what the max speed theoretically is with this motor. You know, so right now we're doing 14 uh, miles an hour. I'm going to do it uh, kilometers an hour. Uh, that's what it is in derail valleys. So that's what I'm going to do on this. It's based off a of check. Uh, I believe it's based off a of check loco. So that would make sense. So like right up there where let's see what that is let's see um, so that's 27 kilometers an hour you know so likely if i want to go faster right so we've hit pretty much the load limit on that motor i would say so uh you'd want to add more motor all right, so we're setting the rate of acceleration, and then we would coast. Now, it should coast a little bit better, but we don't have the momentum of this that we would, which is fine. We can still run it where we want it. Like, you would set that to where you want. So, like, if we want to go this slow, we just set it where we want it. Now, we should be able to maintain that. And now that should have braking for us, and then it should put us in reverse here. And there we go, going backwards. All right, so its job is a shunter, so it's nice to have it where you can do that. Now, spin the tires IRL, and you probably kick off your traction motors. So I might make it that it kicks off the traction motors if you do that, but um, I probably will. So kick off the traction motor. Problem is these don't flip, so... Uh, we'd have to reset it with a flip so you go traction motor would be on you have to go So I'll probably do a traction motor shut off that if if you're greater than say Oh, I don't know 0.5 kilometers or uh, meters per second. It will um, Disconnect the traction motors. It will put in a zero and then you have to um, Go like this to recycle the button and then you've got traction motors. So this that's what I believe this light is for, is traction motor disconnect there. So, you know, ideally you'd want to stop it. All right, so good. So that's working well. Let's bring this back. That's working how I want. Yep, yeah, I made the, the um, junter. All right, so let's see. I'm making it currently. All right, so that's the drive system pretty well in there. Uh, for now, at least. So, you know, this is not going to be able to get the speed that, um, you know, max speed. 
So that tells me right off the bat that we need more motor. And so let's go ahead and let's let's play with that real quick. That's the front and that's the rear. Okay, let's go ahead and let's grab T these out. And we'll double the motors up for now. And we'll see if that gets me what I want. Control S, you fucked me again. Yeah, I find that incredibly frustrating, that keybind change they did. And then, so let's go ahead and put to the brakes here. You see. So what we'll do is we'll flip this. Nope, that's right. What? Why would I flip it? That's perfect. All right, that's perfect the way it is. I put it in the right way the first time. All right. This is going to go to the the loco brakes here. That will be the loco brakes. And then we want to make it reasonably fast. So let's try it at that and see if that's too much. Because I want to be able to actuate it quickly. So now we have some brakes on there for the loco. The other one's going to be the brakes for the train itself. So forward. Give it some juice. Give it some juice. How are like the orientation changes? I like the sticky. Um, you know, it's there are some some small use cases where I think it's nice where they go where they're supposed to, but it's like it always makes sure that they stay where I want them. So that it is, I find it frustrating, especially with any sort of technology when I try to set it somewhere and it's like, nope, I know better. And so I'd rather set it where I want it than to, um, you know, have to. Uh, have it do something on its own. So 13 meters per second. Perfect. We're about where I want. We're at 50 kilometers an hour. That's about where uh, max I run the shunter. Again, it's supposed to be a shunter. It's supposed to be just moving stuff around the yard. Small jobs, small freight, light freight jobs. So that's good. So two motors is perfect. And then we'll go ahead and we'll go down. And then I'll go ahead and I will break us. Bingo. Forward again. See, it doesn't have much momentum, which is fine. We'll just do a kiss a break there. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. I'm happy with that. And then take the, take the brakes off. I need a handbrake here. So I'll uh, probably do... Let's do a handbrake there. It's probably going to be... Uh, it's going to be too high. Damn it. No, it's perfect. Oh, my God, it's perfect. That was a shock to me. I thought I was going to get screwed on this. <laughs> I was like, there's no way it fits. Damn it. Um, the, this has to change, but I can change that. So let's go like this real fast. I would have paid money. I could have, I was going to pay money and tell you that absolutely there's no way that this, that fits. It's going to be one too big, but it actually worked. So we're good. Excited about that. And this is going to have to go, where does that sit? So that's going to have to go above the battery and then retool in. That's fine. Why am I doing this way? Just go straight and then come up. I have the fuel. Is the fuel tank open in here? No, it isn't. Okay, that's the wheels. All right. Let's say, I'll just do this. I don't know why I was doing it funky like through the wall as much as I was all right there we go and then this will go like that nice we can put a handbrake in there so that'll be nice I'll have to feed through a separate brake uh, braking panel but that's not a big deal All right, there we go. And then this is just going to get some block for now. And then we'll take the um, the helm. This is going to be the handbrake, which this looks just about perfect for the handbrake. Hopefully, I think it's going to just fit. Um, I think it's just far enough away from the rest of the crap to fit. Yeah, it is. 
All right, so handbrake goes right there. And that's not going to clip in with the door, so beauteous. Give me the paint. Come on, man. All right, and then that will be the handbrake. So a little braking panel on there. And that will hold that. So this will be AD is going to be sticky. And we'll make it, oh, I don't know, like I want it up high. So 50%. And we'll, uh, yeah, so I'll make it a full negative one is handbrake off, full uh, positive one is handbrake on. All right, so there's the handbrake. Nice. All right, so that's good detail in there. Read some chant. Yeah, it's great when things work. Yeah, why doesn't it break the sound very exactly? Uh, there's no dynamic braking on the, uh, on the DE2. Try to make it as close to what it's supposed to be as possibly. Might angle this panel here. If I do that, I have to change that. Okay, that's the pipe there. I can't change that pipe. I might angle this panel. We'll see. Not like I don't need a ton of angle panels either. It's not something I'm crazy about. All right, good. So that's nice. Yeah, you don't have that on this model, so I wouldn't do it. Uh, let's see. This is going to be loco. This is going to be train brakes there. One, that's good. What do I set you to? 50? No, you're at 100%. Okay, we'll keep that at 100% too. I might even make this 100% on that. All right, Goob. All right, nice. Let's get this generator going. I want to see, and I want to try to get the electricity plumbed in. Um, problem is I got to do it like fast and dirty. Uh, I'm going to do systems, and then I'll do it fast and dirty. All right. So traction motors. Those will be on a relay, so when we do the traction motor button, it will uh, actually actuate the relay. Lighting together. Those are going to have to be in the... Um, it has a breaker panel, too. I'll put breakers on there at some point. Brakes. Drive. Um, enunciators and lights and information. You can go part of these. These are on the hot bus. So for now, just hot bus them. Connect those. Jen can go directly in there for now. All right, now that they're all like system tuned in, I can just drag them all together and then uh, I'll separate them into systems later with panels. Um, let's hook those. I hook everything to one battery so I know where to disconnect it from. That was hooked, right? Yeah, that's hooked. Those are hot bus. That needs to go there. All right, let's see. So let's see. The key button should be working. Let's check it. Um, currently, let's switch that key to toggle for now. It's gonna, it's gonna not be toggle later. It'll be push, but we'll stay. Put it to. Um, can I make this one? Yeah, I can run the reset on it. It'll auto reset. Gotcha. So we'll do that. So that's fine. Stop. Okay, that's good. Does that work? Let's see what else we need on this panel. I want to get this thing started and running and generating. So we need a hook in the battery node, which I did. So that should run, I think. Let's give it a quick uh, test run. It has everything it needs, I believe. So let's shut off infinite electricity and see where we're at. All right, we're up and running. I have no battery read, but um, I can read them off the panels, so. Yep, so engine's kicking up, and it's doing a, it was doing a reasonable job of getting us um, 
powered up. We'll see what it does. It, it's doing an alright job. It's the p-value is high on there. You see it. It's uh, overshooting, undershooting. But that motor is more than enough to run it like this. Let's run full bore and see. Make sure. Oh yeah, I think it should be fine. Oh yeah, we're good. That's more than enough power generation to keep this going. So point two is too much. Point two is enough to, uh, as you can see, accelerate us really, really quickly. So in order to kind of feel a little bit of momentum, I might drop that point two down. Nice. But that is, uh, that's working pretty well so far. Excellent. All right, good. So yeah, the motor is great. The motor is, that's more than enough. I put a a uh, very large motor in there to uh, so they can run at really really low RPS. Read some chat here. Now I'll see you, Oscar. Yeah, yeah, it needs a lot of cooling systems and. You know, you got a lot of other stuff to cool. You need cool electronics. You need to cool the diesel itself. So, yeah. The battery can be at 0.9, but when you read it like that, it can be wrong. And I don't know what you mean. Do not know what you mean. Uh, let's see. Let's grab this real quick, right, Jolly, and stick it back. All right, good. So that is that's working pretty well so far. 0.2 is too high. Let's do 0.02. Again, that's kind of think of it as your acceleration rate. So 0 0.02, don't need the extra period, there we go. Give it a quick little acceleron. I want it to be realistic, you know, we don't have the momentum and the weight. I'll, I could weight this up like a mother too to help, but like that, that's at full throttle now. So we still should get up to our top speed because it's, it's load in relation to the amount of motor we have because we're gonna go up to 19 maximum. But the difference is the rate, so like that's that's overly slow now. But we should theoretically, with this pin, get up to speed. Yeah, so that's overly slow. So let's go. Triple that. Like that feels pretty good there. Again, the main job for this is shunting. I haven't turned the engine on yet. You know, so it's gonna rev the engine, the engine revved way up here to recoup electricity. Now as it gets close, it's gonna start to rev down. So now we're up to eight miles an hour. So that's a good acceleration speed there. You know, we were getting slowed down a little there because we were changing tracks and that was slowing us down. But we might have to add, you know, we might have to increase that again when we're actually towing something. It might, um, you know, it might be too little. So it's not putting enough power through the battery. We'll have to see. I don't know if I have anything that's, that has low enough connections. All right, let's bring this back. We'll uh, we'll up that a little bit. Let's let's just let's double it, and then because I want to make sure it's um, powerful enough to tow. So let's save this real quick. And what do I, let me see the height. I need to check my height. Three, I think it was, off the deck. So let's see. Uh, yep, three above the deck. So let's, let's get that in, and then we'll grab, uh, I'll see if I have a car. I'll move move it if I need to, to get the car. I, know, I need to redo some of the connection systems. I'm completely redoing my train systems, so... And then this will, like, this will require the... The motor. I, I don't know if you can move a D2 without the motor on. I can't remember. 
I haven't. I don't think I've even tried. So there we go. Loco brakes on. With that on a pivot too, it might be able to take a, a car that's higher. So that's, yeah, so that needs to come down one on this new model. I'm going to redo all the connections for my trains. So I I like that. I, I think that's a European system that they have on Derail Valley. We don't, we use different connectors in the U.S., but I like it on Derail Valley. So that's quickly. I need to turn on um, infinite electricity to get this to just come up. All right, and then just release the brakes on this one because the brake system's not in yet. Give me something to tow around, see how it behaves when it's towing. And then they're all going to get the floppy dong here, so you lift the floppy dong. I need it pushing in the right direction. Is that battery? Oh, uh, battery on this is not mounted. I gotta pick up the floppy dong here. No. Oh, come on, fucker! Nasty fucker! I'm telling you. <laughs> you son of a bitch! Come on, come on, come on, come on! Oh, you're you're the biggest pain in the balls, aren't you? It just connected. <laughs> I'm just going to rip this apart for now. Just trying to do a quick little toe test there, guys. It'd be an absolute total pain in the ass. I deleted those. Yep, okay, good. All right, there we go. Hopefully we can get this hooked now. Stand by, I'll check chat in a second. Just trying to get this connected. Yeah, I like these uh, kind of like the Real Valley style connections. That's how I'm gonna do. If you literally stop right before you get to me, you're annoyed. Oh, you motherfucker! I'm telling you. Should just put the brake on and backed into it. Is what I should have done. There we go. All right. All right, so we got something on at least. Let's see. Um, what RPS are we talking about? Uh, well, the electric motor should go up. Like, what do you mean for the engine? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. All right, so we're accelerating. We're accelerating nicely now with that, so that's not bad. So what I'm hoping is that when I detach, I would like to do all manual detach because that's how you do it in Derail Valley. And so what I want to do is, as long as the connectors get far enough away from each other, we can do two floppy dongs and they're too far away from each other to auto connect. And that way it will give me, so I can disconnect it with my hands. And as long as I'm holding it, it can't reconnect. The other one will fall away and then I'll let mine fall away and then hopefully they won't reconnect. So we'll have to see. That will work.
What I think I'm gonna do with the bumpers is invert the uh, invert the, the suspension part so that the thick parts out here they don't look so thin and spindly. So that's doing a pretty good job now. Let's see what our accelerate if we're accelerated up now. What's that? Probably need a little bit more, a uh, higher number in the throttle. Let's see what are we up to now? Five and change. That's 20 kilometers an hour, something like that. Right there. All right, so that works well. Let's leave that out there. This is gonna have to go back up. We'll just do 0.2 on it for now. <laughs> All right, there we go. And then let's play with these real quick. All right, so let's flip this bad John. There we go. So that should be good. I'm gonna attach two. I'm gonna put two of these together. I want to test out detaching the floppy dong here and see if that works the way I want it to. Have to jump in the D2 and D Rail Valley later and see what the uh, check some things out. All right, so I don't want these to grab themselves. So what I might do, I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. We'll see if they're ideally, hopefully they're a little bit far apart, a little bit for you know they're reasonable distance apart from each other. They won't auto grab because they're both sitting down, but I think they are close enough that they will. So, so let's see. <clears throat> oh, that's perfect. If they don't want to grab, that's beautiful because what we'll do is. Um, I'll make it so that I have to pick it up because that should bring them close enough. So if I grab it like this, now they should be getting close enough. Hopefully. Maybe not. You fucker. Uh, let's see. The bumpers could probably go in one. Let's see. The floppy dongs either have to go up or they uh, have to be longer. Maybe put the bumpers in more. Because ideally, I want to be able to connect these. So what I want is like them to be close enough where I grab it and they will then grab one another. So let's see. So let's... Um, why is my phone constantly going off? Jesus. I loathe the telephone. I really do. Hopefully, I might not be able to move this in. Oh, I can. Awesome. That is good. All right. Beautiful. That's awesome. I'm happy with that now. Nice. 
nice, nice, nice. All right, good. Um, these stick out further than I'd like, so now they'll stick in more. They get pushed out when it first, you know. These do not have very high um, suspension rates on them. Right, there we go. And then is there any way I can grab all this? I should be able to grab the whole bumper again. Just uh, They're identical front and back. There's no extra info to them, so I should be able to just grab them up and place them there. At, try to make them symmetrical for this very reason. All right, let's copy you. Oh my god, my phone's going to get friggin' quieted real quick here. Any sort of distraction destroys my brain, so. Why is it hidden there now? Balls. Screw it. I'm just going to flip them manually. So I have to redo the engines if I do that. Is this different? This is, I think that's different. Yeah, this is one off here. That's interesting. See if I could just attach them there. Um, come on, stop. Yeah, this is different. This is a little bit closer in the back, which I don't hate, but I just as long as I can adhere this to there, we're in business here. Okay, that's fine. I can fix it. So I like the general proportion, so I don't want to screw with it too much. So what we'll do is this. Okay, that's good. And then what we'll do is we'll grab you out for now. Alright. Back where you belong, you are. All right, there we go. All right, so that should uh, keep them a little bit closer. Let's test, the, let's save it real quick too. I haven't saved it in a little while. All right, we'll see the, the JP thing. Oh shit, I didn't realize there was one there. All right, so we know that works now. They auto connect. So what I want to be able to do is drop them and then be able to um, want to be able to drop them and then be able to have these disconnect and stay disconnected. All right, so that perfect. That pushes them away enough that I can do auto connection. So as long as I bang it a little bit, this one probably yeah, this one didn't get connected. You can see it's flopping, but um, yeah, that's perfect. That's absolutely perfect. Why the fuck? happened to you did i not adhere you you some bitch did not adhere that some bitch there okay that's it that's not a big deal all right let's see let's uh, spawn it up and we'll go a uh, couple so this is actually convenient that i i do like having to go manually do it but i could always just get off i still have to do airlines too so that's not a big deal you know i wish there's more momentum i'm gonna probably try to wake these up a little bit see if i can get a little momentum but see there we go beautiful so those are now connected and if i want to disconnect them because the bumpers push so hard which is what i want i hold those off and now you see they'll separate and now they're not connected so the bumpers need to push in hard to connect them and if i grab it and raise it can i get the other one to grab probably not so I do need to put a little pressure on it, which isn't the end of the world. Perfect. All right, that's actually really good. I like that. All right, nice. So like if I wanted this to uh, auto grab, let's see, let's hammer into it a little bit. There we go. I can compress them and get it. Beautiful. That's actually really good. That's good. 
So nice. So that gives me enough manual work to do that I'm happy, and it's, it's not too much. Let's uh, read a little chat. I think we'll, I need to go use the facilities. How's it going there, Aaron? Good to see you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, you got to get them compressed a little bit because you want some compression, yeah. Can you do a manual air valve as a brake? Yeah, there, there. Yeah, you could do it. Like essentially, what you do is you let the air in, and when the air pressure builds up, and then as you close the valve, it goes into an out cycle. So I might do it. I've thought about it. Um, you know, and then you you essentially run it off pressure, and then it always vents the pressure. That's probably what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go hit the head real quick. I'm gonna put on the um, coffee break thing, and I'll be right back. And then uh, I want to start getting into the break, so that would be a good uh, good topic to move on to there. I'll be right back. All right, I have returned here, so uh, be good. Let's get in some uh, break theory. Let me quickly just grab this, save it. All right, we'll get in some break theory. So I'm not going to go over, like, how real brakes, uh, you know, I, I know how real tractor brakes are set up. I'm not going to go through real train brakes because, you know, Getting through the whole point of it, I know how air brakes work, and it's better, I think, to go right to how we're going to make it work in game. I think that's a little bit better. Let me quickly check that message is popping up here. Yep, yeah, that's fine, Alistair, if you want to do that. I don't know if he's in here. I thought he was, so I'm not sure. Let me check this. Uh, yeah, I'll look at that, uh, uh, Rasmus. All right, let me go ahead and uh, let's see. Let me catch up a chat real quick. 
All right, so let's go ahead and let's do some theory here on how this is actually going to... Yep, thank you. Um, Rasmus, I'll look at that too. Um, yeah, we'll look at um, some theory on this and we'll see. First, let, before I actually look at how it really works, I'll, I'll do how I would do it and then we'll see how close it is. That'd be kind of interesting. So the way I'm going to probably think of doing this is this. Let's see. Because, you know, we have to think in the way that the game's going to work, too. And so I want to, we'll do my way first, and then we'll see how close it is to real stuff. So uh, you, let's talk the loco first. And so, um, so the loco system essentially is you're going to have to have a reserve tank. And this is kind of like, an, uh, you know, in a hydraulic system, it would be a sump. You're going to have your air tank for your. Um, you know, for your air that's going to store air from the compressor. So the compressor is going to make air, and it's going to pump it into uh, your reserve tank here. And that's going to hold your air. All right. And then your brake actuation, generally on a tractor trailer, the way it's working is, um, which would be different on the train, but essentially you have these air cans. And so the air can is going to be like this. And you have a wafer in there in the center. And so you have a wafer like this, and then you have a shaft. Can you dig it um, like that? And so essentially on a tractor trailer, the way it works is you have spring brakes and you have um, you have your spring brakes and you have your service brakes. And so you need to add air to the system, and it will push on one side of it. Let's say this side here. So that's your red line, your emergency line. And that's going to push the wafer. It's going to fill this area, push the wafer, and that's going to release the park brakes. And then when you want to actuate the brakes, what you would do is you use your service line, which is blue. And your service line comes in, and it will actually push air in this side to push the brake back toward brakes on. And so that's how they generally work in a tractor trailer system. All right, so now with the train, we're going to assume they're off when the when the val when the uh, handle is off or the valve is off, and they're on. Now, I could do it with manual valve. The reason I've decided not to do it with a manual valve is I don't want brakes on. I could do it like that though. I wanted progressive brakes, but I could do it where I turn the valve on, and then the longer I leave it on, the more brake pressure I build up, and then I shut it off. It vents. Trying to think. See, the problem is, um, yeah, flip it this way. I'm trying to think of the orientation. It's going to take up too much space, I think, if I try to do it with the actual, because it's going to take up three blocks minimum to, to rotate them around, unless I go through the wall. Yeah, so I think with this application, I'm just going to use the throttle. I think it, it's going to give me a prog let me have progressive brakes. And so what? I, what I'm thinking of doing is you're gonna have a reserve tank, and what's gonna happen is the the motor is gonna is gonna clutch in and out, and it will pump air into the reserve tank. All right, and then let's do uh, wheels real quick here. So on this particular locomotive, we have um, two sets of wheels. Okay, try to get them close to each other. All right, so those are your two wheels on this locomotive. So you're gonna pump air into the tank. And then you essentially have kind of like that uh, buffer system you would have. I'm going to make it simplified in my version here, where it's essentially like this. So you would have the brake actuator here and the brake actuator here. I should just copy these. Um, I'll make one and then copy. All right. And then so the way you work is pretty much standard hydraulic cylinder. You're going to go. You have the. The wafers right there, and then you have a shaft going off of that. And that is then going to go out. It's going to go to a gear, or it's going to go to a essentially an arm, and that will run the brakes. So if you put air in on, let's do, um, try to see. So we'll do this uh, blue line here. So if air goes from here into there, it's going to push that actuator and set the brakes, all right? And then what you would do is you would do a vent. And so the vent would be, uh, so when you 
add brake, what you're doing is you're opening a valve, letting more and more air pressure go in here, pushing this closer and closer to full brakes on. Uh, when you open up the air vents, what's going to happen is it closes this valve. That valve snaps shut. No more air can go in there. So if, if you shut the valve, what's going to happen is there's air pressure in here. It's going to maintain continuous braking. So if we put in, like, say, I don't know, 10 PSI in there, 10 atmosphere. Let's talk atmospheres. Say you put 10 atmospheres in here, it's going to maintain, say, 75% brake consistently until you vent the air. When you vent the air, the pressure will drop. There's a spring in here. And this spring will return the system. So let's uh, you try to do a spring in here. So you have a spring in here. And this spring wants to return it to brakes off. And so until you vent the air, it's going to maintain that. And then as you, uh, as you shut the valve off, it's going to open the vent. And it's going to stop adding pressure. And the air will expend. Now, let's say this is down whatever the capacity of this is. Let's say this is down 5%. So you lose 5% of your air volume. And so what will happen is the compressor will kick on when you get too low on air. So let's say when we get down to 80% air, the compressor will kick on. So the more we actuate our brakes, we keep losing air pressure in the reservoir tank. And that will um, eventually, we'll get down below 80. The compressor will kick on and it'll pump us back up to max pressure. Um, that way that will work realistically. I might even work on the, tra the tractor brakes again to make them more realistic. But um, so I think that's going to be the way to do it. <clears throat> so when the brake is down to, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to do it. So we'll set RPS on brake level, I think. So let's do some quick testing on pressures. So that's going to be the loco brake. The, the train brakes will work the same. There'll be a reservoir tank on the loco cars, on the cars, um, as a reservoir tank. And so the loco will actually fill the reservoir tanks. And um, and then they'll do the same thing. They'll vent into, in this case, we don't actually have an air can. So what's going to happen is it's going to vent from the <clears throat> from the reservoir tank into an uh, empty tank. And then that empty tank is going to vent out. So I think we'll do that. So that's probably how I'm going to set up the systems here. So let's go and we'll play with some systems and uh, see what we can do. So I'm going to go ahead and we will, I saved this already, but we'll save it again. All right, let's load in the base plate. That's too large. You suck. Um, let's see. Let's grab this. All right, so let's grab this, and I want to make a uh, kind of a full-fledged system here, and we'll test that out. So... This is going to be our reservoir tank. A reservoir tank is going to hold air. All right, and then this here will be our brake tank. Oh, you fucker, you. Um, let's get off symmetry real quick. All right, so that is our... So we'll, f we'll empty both these. The reason why I've been using these little tanks is just for space consciousness. Like, these tanks, I really like these tanks. I think they look good. Uh, but these have no pass-through. So in order to make these equal to these tanks, if you get them in line, would be a really good shape. I have to put a T-valve on them to get equal. So they turn into 1x4s, where these are 1x2s. That's the only reason I'm using them. If I can get them to fill in, if I, could, if I have enough space, I'll use the bigger tanks. But the reason I'm using these is just they're very space-conscious with um, having flow-throughs on them. All right, so these two are going to be empty. Uh, this one will actually... Um, I'll pump up, so they're both empty right now. All right, so this is going to be the brake actuator, and so what we'll be doing is we'll read the pressure off of this, and that will set the brake pressure. So what I need to do is um, we'll see what ambient is, and we'll see what max is. So to take the place of the compressor in the locomotive, we'll use a, a just a small electric... Uh, pump and this is because this has a cap out this does not pump more than i think what is a 10 11 atmosphere the big one goes to 60 we could do that uh we'll see how much we need i don't want it to take forever that's the only reason i'm thinking not to do that so let's do fluid um move port fluid port right there all right so let's take a toggle 
And so we'll just diagram it out, and then we'll be able to build from there. So let's start like this. Infinite electricity's on. Okay. And so right now, this should have some air pressure in there. All right, 0.43, minimal. And that goes up to 11. So that's a, just a usable number. That's the only reason I'm doing that. Um, like, essentially, what we could do is we could just divide that by 10. And so 11 atmospheres would be 1.1 break, which would give us, you know, um, max breaking, essentially. All right, so now the reservoir tank is full. Once the reservoir tank is full, we'd shut the pump off. So that's stage. That's the first stage. All right. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we'd have a pipe go in here, and that would do a variable valve. And so this would work directly on desired breaking. All right, that's desired breaking there, all right? And then what we want to do is that's bleed out. That's our uh, that's blowout valve. <coughs> so that's going to be the blowout valve. The nice thing with, with train stuff is we have huge amounts of space. So I can do this. Some of my truck stuff, I didn't go in this much detail because it's just going to be an absolute nightmare to get everything spaced. I believe this is forward flow. Yep, flew it out right there. All right, and so the way we would work these brakes... Now, the, this tank is going to be automatic, okay? Um, this one's going to be automatic. So this would automatically maintain this at, at 11 PSI, at 11 atmosphere. When it goes down, say, 20%, which would be what about two two point two? It would then kick on the t the pump again to get it back up, and so as we utilize the brakes more, this is going to drain more. This is then going to pump it more. Uh, so we'll hear the pumps kick on as we use our brakes. We'll hear them shut off once they're full. <coughs> All right, good. And then this is going to be set to a maximum of let's say point one. This one here could go to a maximum of, let's say, 0.1. All right, this is going to go to here. This is going to go to here. All right, so we'll do a quick little break demo. All right, and so what's going to happen here is let's go let's grab this real quick. I'm just going to grab a, a simple – actually, we could do it, wheels. Let's grab just a simple set of wheels here. All right, and then what's going to happen is this pressure here, this tank pressure, is going to be tied to the brake value. All right, so mostly trying to keep it as mechanical as possible. So, all right, we have nothing, pretty much nothing in this tank. I'm going to pump it up to max. All right, we're capped. All right, so we're up to maximum pressure in this tank. Now, in order to apply the brakes, let's look at this. This is running at 2.8. So we, so what I want to do is completely vent that out. It's going to go to atmospheric pressure, so I need to put it in a correction for atmospheric pressure. So whatever the atmospheric pressure is, it would automatically take it off. So we would subtract off, say, point, um, 0.99, whatever it is. So we'd read atmospheric pressure. We would subtract it off. All right, so that's in there. And then so we're going to close the blowout valve. All right, and now to increase the brake pressure, we need to vent air from here into there. All right, so there we go. Brakes are applying. We're applying brake. We're applying brake. Now, as I start to decrease the brake, as long as I don't go to zero, we should have held pressure in there. All right, so now the brakes are held in application. When I get to zero, I want this to actuate. And so what I'll probably do is have the brake go into a negative territory, and that will automatically vent. <clears throat> so we'll do something like that, I think. All right, so I need to put in uh, first a correction. So let's get the panel going. Phone won't stop going off. Drive me nuts, drive me nuts. All right, let's get this micro going, so... All right, so we need to have res tank res tank pressure number input. We need to have the um, brake tank pressure, and then we have to have a number input, and this is going to be barrow.
All right, standard atmosphere barrow. All right, so that's going to go in. Let's quickly get a text on here. And then this system should work both um, loco and cars, but the difference being that the cars will read their own thing. And so this will be a 100% uh, pneumatic brake system. So this will be kind of cool, I think. All right, so let's see. The reservoir tank pressure. So we want to set this up so that... Um, Pid. I'm trying to think if I want to do this as a pit or not. Um, let's not do it as a pit. Let's keep it simpler than that. All right. So let's say what is it? It was eleven and change. So let's see, eleven minus um, eleven minus two point two is eight point eight. So. So if the reservoir tank pressure is less than let's just do eight. Less than eight. Eight. This is gonna be uh res let's see pump clutch in pump clutch in that will go and then we'll add a node that will be the um, compressor alright so I'll kick on the compressor when the pressure goes below 8 and then um, we're going to actually do this Jesus Christ can I not type my hands are cold so like I can't type for shit all right, so let's see if um, I needed that. Let's go back here. Pump clutch out. Should be cut. Alright. So the pump is going to cut in if we're below 8. And it's going to cut out once we get above 11. So it will be... If it's going to be X and not Y... Compressor will auto cut in. So that's going to automate uh, us making pressure essentially for the system. All right, so that part's done. All right, next we have the brake tank pressure and the standard atmosphere barrow. So what this is going to do is we're going to go. I'm just going to do function here. We'll do everything functions. Fuck off. Give me this. All right. Um. All right, so we're going to take the brake tank pressure, and it's going to be X minus Z. So we'll get rid of um, standard atmospheres there so that we don't have brake application when it's just standard atmospheres in there. And that's going to go out to the brakes. Okay. All right, and then we need to uh, vent it, so... I think I want to make the throttle work. Um, the throttle could be per, uh, could be pressure. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Um, yes. I'm going to make this a little bit more complex. I think that's going to be the way to do it. It'll require a little pit tuning, but I think we'll get it really, really nice if we do this. I, again, I want it to be a nice system. I want it to work beautifully. So, Let's see. Number output. This is going to be... Uh, Blow out valve. Blow out valve. All right, good. Blow out valve. And so the way the blow out valve is going to work is we'll work off pressure. And so let's see. Um, yeah, so let's do a PID.
All right, and so what's going to happen here is I need to I'll probably put a clamp on that. All right, X zero to one. All right, there we go. That's going to be the uh, flow valve price shouldn't go that high because this is going to be the rate at which we um, let's actually do this. Because this is going to be the rate at which the brakes release. So let's see. So I want to be able to set this. So if, if, for example, if the brakes come off too slow, I want to change this. If the brakes are coming off too fast, I want to change this. So we'll do clamp. Uh, zero. No, X. Jesus Christ. X, comma, zero, comma. Wow. Wow. Comma a Z. All right, and so this is going to be uh, break blowout rate. All right, and so let's go to point one, and so this will allow me to to tailor how fast we release the brakes. All right. Um, let's see. So this is a blow of valve. Uh, no, let me see. Shit. Yeah, uh, let's see. All right, we're going to run this like this. So this is going to come down here like that. And then what I want to do is we need to add. That's blow up valve. Okay, this is going to be break valve. Sorry, guys, I'm just kind of skipping chat for the moment as I'm doing this. I'll catch up here, right? Let's catch up right now. I've kind of got the thought of how I want to do this. Yep, should be complicated. Should be um, interesting, you know. It's kind of the whole point of the, the game for me is I want to make the systems interesting and complex and, and realistic where they can be. All right, so the brake valve here is going to be... Um, let's see. Let's clamp that too. Let's see, brake valve rate. Brake valve rate. Okay. And so what's going to happen here is essentially, if this is negative, let's see. Um, All right, so what this is going to essentially do is this is going to be negative. When the PID is negative, that means that I want to, uh, I want the, I want to blow air out, and it's going to close this valve. So it's automatically going to close this valve. So what I want is when I want to add brake, right? The brake lever is going to be based on the rate uh, that I want, and so it's going to. Uh, you know, it's going to set the rate at which the air, the essentially the PS, the atmospheres in the tank. And so as I pull the brake all the way to zero, the PID's going to go negative. It says, oh, crap, he's got too much brake pressure in there. It's going to automatically close the brake valve, and it's going to automatically open the blowout valve. And then I can independently change the rates at which it does that. That's why I did it this way. That way these will automatically open and close both valves in unison perfectly without me having to with them and this is like i talk about this method like when you see a lot of people in the workshop they're like or they're complaining after the devs make a change they're like oh all my systems are broken part of it is like building a system like this is resilient because if air pressure changes this system still should work it might need tweaking but it doesn't stop working because it's still going to be based off of realistic rates and so it's it it shouldn't break completely you know, if I just tweaked this till it works, that's when you get things that just break. Because if you just happen to just change numbers until it works, that's when you're going to get something that stops working if a change is made. Uh, this should keep working because, you know, it's it's still based off of the pressure. So kind of why I try to do these more complex systems is they, they have some resiliency to them. All right, so let's see. Um... So what we're going to be reading here is the brake pressure in the tank. So what we need is the, where the hell is it? Um, here's the brake tank pressure right here. 
is the uh, is the s process variable. What did I have there? X minus D. You know what we should actually do? This should be off of the... Oh, we should run off standard atmospheres. Uh, well, that should... See, this should never see standard atmospheres. Shit. I got to look at this here for a second. I'm trying to think. The brake tank itself... Yeah, the brake tank itself will read standard atmospheres. So that needs to be accounted for. Because if we open the blowout valve 100%, it would equalize with the room. So we need to subtract the room. How's it going, Zachy? I uh, was working on the D2. Got most of this uh, got it up and running pretty well. I'm working on the brake system now, which is one of the more complex systems. So. All right, and then so that's going to be the process variable is the uh, tank pressure minus standard atmospheres because that will give us essentially all it's doing is it's zeroing it out so when we're at standard atmospheres there should be no breaks so if we're in the room and the tank is open there should be no breaks as soon as we start adding pressure in excess of standard atmospheres that's when it should give us breaks all right all right good and then that should work fine like that all right then the set point is going to come off of the brake throttle so this will be a number input brake throttle. Okay. All right, and so the brake throttle is going to come in, and I'm just going to, do I keep this simple and then go to the max? I think I do. So what we're going to do here is we're going to do some multiplication here. So I'll keep the, because if I, ch so this is the thing. By doing it with, um, I'm trying to think of the best way to put this. By doing it with rates, you're essentially, you don't have, you have, no matter what system, how high the tank system, no matter how high the pressure works, the system will always work, uh, essentially. And so that's why we're kind of doing it this way. Let's say that I decide that I want to go from the small pump, which is at 11 atmospheres, to the big pump, which goes up to 60 atmospheres. If I made my system run off the certain PSI value or atmospheric value, it would not work because if I switch them, I'd have to redo all my numbers. With this system, what this is going to do is this is going to um, this should work with either pressure system. So I, I will have to put some sort of rate of change in here, but that's all right. So what this will do is let's see. Um, let's see. Okay, let's do this. So what we'll do is we'll do a function. Oh, fuck, I keep grabbing the wrong function one. Go that. That will go like this. Okay. So what this is going to do is this is going to take the brake throttle. All right. It's going to be X times Z. All right. And then what you'll put in is you can put in the, um, let's see, reservoir tank. Max ATM. All right, so what you're going to do is you're going to enter in the reservoir tank's max atmosphere. So, like, if I change this to a 60 atmosphere system, all I'd have to do is come in here and go 60. This is at an 11. So we put that at 11. And now what it's going to do is the brake throttle is going to go 0 to 1. All right, 0 being nothing, 1 being max. And then it's going to multiply it by this. So it's going to say to the pit, hey, I want 11 atmospheres. Okay. <coughs> All right, it's going to say, hey, I want 11 atmospheres. Um, pump cut out there. Okay, that's good. You'd have to change pump cut out. That's fine. But I'm making it so you could easily change to a, to, a, to a higher pressure system if you wanted with a couple small changes. All right, so let's say the brake throttle tells me, hey, I want 11. It's going to read this. It's going to tell you, hey, the brake tank pressure is at um, 0.9. It's going to be, let's say, 0.99 or 1. Let's say 1. The room is at 1. So the brake... The brake tank pressure is at one because the blowout valve was open, right? We just starting. It's going to take one minus one, and that's going to be zero. It's going to have zero brakes, all right? As I increase this, right, let's say I go all the way to up to a one. It's going to go one times 11. So I say, hey, I want 11 atmospheres in my brake uh, reservoir. So what it's going to do is it's then going to, the PID's going to say, okay, well, you're currently at zero. I want 11. I need to go to a 1. I go to, and I can't go to a 1. I can go to a point 0.1. So it goes to a point 0.1. It opens the brake valve, letting 
Um, air go. This brake valve isn't the right way to name that. Let's see. Reservoir valve is a better way to name that. So it's going to open the reservoir valve up to a maximum rate of 0.1. And it's going to let the high pressure air go from the reservoir tank into the brake tank. Now that's going to cause this to increase. It's going to be, let's say it goes up to 11. So now it's 11 minus 1. We get 10, right? So that's going to go to the brakes. All right, now brakes don't need to go to a maximum of that, right? So we go clamp. Right, the brakes themselves only go zero to one. So we're gonna go like that. Um, let's see, X minus Z, comma, zero, comma, one. All right, and so that's gonna go up like that. Oh shit, we don't wanna do that. We need to do, I need to do it to the right as well. Uh, do I do it on outside or not? Let's, we can put it right here. Okay, so here's the pump cutout. We'll make this the same as the pump cutout. So what this is going to do is, um, and we'll put some math in here. Y, okay. I think of this way to do it. Um, let's see. I should be able to do divided by y. All right, let's, so let's do a test here. So let's say that it is 11 as x, right? 11 minus standard atmosphere, which is 1, right? That's 10 divided by um, 11. It's going to give me 0.9. So that works. That will give me the braking force that I need. So then let's say that I go to 50% pressure in there. So it's going to be, let's say, um, you know, half of 11. So let's just say 5. 5 minus 1 divided by, and then what I put, 11. It's going to give me 0.36 break. All right, good. So that works. So that will work for us. Those formulas should work to give us good break values there. All right, and then I'm just going to do a constant on for this. And it'll change. That'll probably be keyed later. So the PID's not always running. Let's try a P value of 1. Let's try, I don't know, let's do 0.1. I don't think it has to be very high. I could change it as necessary. All right, so let's give this a run, see how it works. All right, so we need compressor. We need brake. Uh, let's do, yeah, that's fine. Uh, let's see. This here is going to go throttle lever. This is what? Uh, these need to go. So this is going to be my regular brake lever. I don't need that. That's automated now. This is going to be brakes. That's going to be 0 to 1. Okay, and then this is going to be brake throttle. That is blowout valve. That is reservoir valve. That's going to be brakes. All right, this is going to be the reservoir tank pressure. This is going to be the standard atmosphere barometer. So we need a barometer. Okay, standard atmosphere barometer. And this is going to be brake tank pressure. All right, so let's give this a run, see how it works. All right, so right now the reservoir. Um, okay, I, gotta, I, I screwed this up a little bit. I'll fix that condition. This still should work. It will just kick the pump on. All right, so right now we should have a brake force of zero. We do. This should be closed. This should be um, closed. All right, so we have a 0.28 in there. That's just what it spawned with. That's fine. All right, let's increase the brakes. So this valve is opened. It's increasing the brake force. Now, until we get over standard atmospheres, it's not going to do any brake applications. We need to increase the brakes to get over standard atmospheres, which is, um, which in this case is going to be 0.99, I would say. So, all right, there we go. Now brakes are applying. 
Now, likely the rate of change on this is like 0.1 is too small. Like, so this is closed, this is open. We're starting to fill the brake reservoir, we're starting to build brake pressure up. So, you know, between the P value being at 0.1, which is pretty small, and these being capped at 0.1, um, that's pretty low. So I might uh, bring these up to one, we'll see. All right, so you see we're starting to build brake pressure. All right, so let's tweak the numbers a little bit. Uh, let's fix the this condition here. All right, so let's see. I, I like doing an up-down counter on this, so let's do that. All right, so let's see. Zero, one, one, okay. One. Compressor. All right, so let's work this. So if the, let's do some bool. All right, so if the if the reservoir tank pressure is less than 0.8, we want to click up. Uh, it's going to be a pulse. We need a pulse. All right, so if the reservoir tank pressure is less than uh, 8 atmospheres, it's going to kick the pump on. And then we need a condition to shut the pump back off. So the condition is if it is... Um, Greater than that. Actually, we actually don't need the bull there. If it's greater than that, we'll zero it. And then that should kick it back on. Uh, we need a pulse on there. All right, let's run that. All right. So that should fix that. And then we want to change some rates. So the brake valve rate, let's change that. Let's go all the way up to one. I have a really low P value on there. So let's see. And then the blowout valve dump rate, let's uh, make that. This one has to be set somewhere low. So let's do like 0.3. And let's see how this works. All right. All right. So now this should hopefully work uh, with the pump. So this pump should go until this is up to 11. That worked. All right. That's good. All right, so we want to start to, we should have zero brake pressure in there. Nice. This should probably start at just under one. Let's start increasing this. There we go. Yep, that works now. Brake's coming on. All right, see, it's holding the brake pressure where I left the throttle. So if I want more brake force, I need to increase the throttle. Uh, we might have capped out there. We're pretty, ca or we're capped out because of where it's at. All right, and so now the brake reservoir and this are full. All right, now I want to take the brakes off, but I want to take a little off. So let's take a little break off. Um, why are you not dropping? Let's see. I see why, okay. Let's see, I got I to gotta work on this now. Okay, let's see, what are you at? You're at, currently you're showing 0.5. go to zero here that should open the valve so that's closed now so zero so that's all right it's holding the brake pressure but I want to decrease the brake pressure and point one is definitely too slow or point three is definitely too slow why is the valve so low I think their p-value let's let's bump that p-value up to one see how we work with that um, let's play with it with the higher p-value first all right, so this tank should be full now. It is. Okay. We should have zero brake on there. Yep, let's uh, give it a little bit of brake. So that goes way, way too high, way too fast. I, what I might do is do a direct off of this. Let me see what full, full brakes. Yeah, see, I don't know why that's not letting more in. It's subtracting, it's subtracting uh, standard atmosphere from there. So subtracting 0.99 from there, and it's giving us that. And then I should be able to bring it back, and we should be able to get our decrease in brake pressure. We're not. So let's go ahead, and then once I go to zero, it, it works fine, opening this valve and closing this one. All right, 
So we gotta do somewhere in between intermediary. Okay, so I gotta work on that in there. Some math, some of the math screwed up here, so let's see. Let's try this. This this might be part of the problem. Let's do that and let's play with it real quick. All right, so let's uh, zero a break application. Let's do a little bit of break application. There we go. That's better. Let's do a little bit more break application. All right, let's take some off. There we go. That's working better. Yep, that was just a bad connection there. Go up on the brake pressure application. There we go. Let's uh, go down a little bit. Beautiful. Go all the way up. And the brake should drop off to zero. Slowly, too. You know, I was talking about how they work IRL, too. Is like, it takes time. The longer the locomotive, the longer that air is going to take to get vented, you know. So this rate here, this blowout valve rate, needs to increase to let more air out. So that when I'm at all the way down, it just lets all the air out. So that's like, if, it's, if I can't release the brakes fast enough, this blowout valve rate needs to go up. But this is working really well, like it is, so... Full brakes on hard. Slam should slam on the brakes. It does. Pull it off a little bit. Oh no, we slammed the brakes too hard. We should get off the brakes some, but not completely. So it's going to pull the brakes back, but it's not going to completely stop the brakes. And then did this return? Yep, this is turning the pump on when necessary to get there. So like if I go slam it in there, the pump comes on. Yep, to refresh it. So it's working really well. And then pull it off, and then it's a little bit slow for brake release because this valve's limited to 0.3. So let's quickly uh, increase that. Let's just bang it up and see what happens at 1. But this is working really well. I'm happy with it. All right, so full. we got a full reservoir. Bang. Oh, my God. Let's stop. S applies the brakes. Recuperates. It pumps back in to recuperate. We've got good pressure in there. All right, let's uh, blow it out and see how fast the brakes come off. Very fast. Okay, good. So, like, that, this will set the rate at which we release the brakes. All right, so that's, uh, let's increase that blow. Let's go to, instead of going to 1 on that brake blowout rate, let's go, like, 0.75. All right, so I'm happy with that. That works really, really well. That's all right. That's okay, Zerfin. Here when you're here. But yeah, so I'm happy with the system. I think this is going to work well. And so the reason why I want a mechanical system like this is uh, this brake controller will go on each on each car. And it will be based off of the pressure. And so what's going to have to happen is this here, let's say this is the independent brake. The independent brake works for the locomotive only, okay? And so what it's going to do is the locomotive is pumping the, uh, the compressor is running on the locomotive, okay? And so the compressor and the locomotive is what's pumping and making the air for every train car. And so if you have one locomotive all by itself, the compressor should easily be able to fill this tank. That air will easily vent over to this and then break. All right. And then the blowouts will blow out. Okay. And now what's going to happen is then you have your train break. And so what's going to happen is the locomotive is going to have to pump air through the air hose to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cars. Okay. And each car is going to have essentially the setup a reservoir, a uh, brake valve, a brake res a brake tank, and a blowout valve. And so each one's going to work independently with that with the information given. And that's going to work off the train brake. And so uh, this will, this will fill, uh, so this tank here essentially. Uh, you'll have the independent uh, train brake will have its own reservoir tank. So in the locomotive, it will have two tanks. It will have the independent tank, 
for its independent um, train brake, and then it will have the train brake. And so this tank is going to be connected through hose to all of these tanks. And so the pressure is going to equalize between all of these reservoir tanks. And so what's going to happen is, it. so when you first connect to a train, there might be no air in the reservoirs. Just like in a tractor trailer, they, the, the, the tanks on the trailer may have leaked overnight. So you need to pump all of your air pressure up and to get the um, air pressure in there. And so um, then they're all going to be full. Then they can uh, apply the brakes as necessary. Now, I'm trying to think how I want to do this. Let's see. I'm trying to think of how, if, if they're disconnected, I want the brakes to come on. So I'm trying to think. Yeah, so I'm trying to think of how I could do this with. So I need the park brakes on. So. What I might do is just set a park brake system on there so that when they're disconnected, the park brake comes on. So what I could do is, um, this is what I'll do. Okay, I've got it in my mind here. So what's going to happen is when uh, when the trains, when the cars disconnect, right? Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of the best way to do this here. Um, so what we can do is with the, uh, with the brake valve here, uh, when the cars are disconnected, the brake valve will go open. Okay. And so what that's going to do is that's going to cause all the air pressure from the reservoir tank to go flooding into the brake tank and it's going to put all the brakes on. All right. So this will work realistically because you have to you have to put air to the system to release the parking brakes. So you would um, I don't know if that works like that on trains, but we're going to make it work on this because I don't leave something on a hill and, and have them roll. And so what's going to happen is this valve will fully open when it's um, the valve will fully open when the tr when the cars are disconnected and that will cause this to um, that will cause this to. Uh, open this valve completely. All the air pressure is going to go in, which will actuate the brakes. Then when you hook the system up, it's going to read whatever the system's running at. The system says, hey, I want zero. It's going to close the valve. We still have air in there, right? That's going to vent the air out of the brake chamber. <clears throat> so that will require the locomotive to refill all these reservoir tanks because now they're empty. That would be good. I like that. So let's do that. So let's do, this will be loco. Let's go here. Let's do um, independent. All right, independent break. This is going to be train break. Train break. All right, and we'll add that node in there. So, <clears throat> trying to think how not to keep these constant ons, but they're probably going to have to be constant ons. Yeah, let's, uh, let's we'll figure it out. Hmm. Because I want it to all work with air pressure. So I think that's what we'll do. So where's the um, the reservoir valve? It's there. I think what we'll do is we'll make this here. Let's add a node. That's going to be on off input. I'm trying to think what I want to do here. 
because it, it reads a zero when it's not connected, so I, it's going to be problematic to read a zero. Try to think. Trying to think of the best way to do this. Let me read some chat and then I'll figure this out. Trail breaks? Yeah, I'll look at it. Huh, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this. Let me see. Let me look at uh, Rasmus' link real quick. Um, I want to see if they have the brakes hard on or you have to put on that um, hand brake. That could change my mind on some of this stuff. All right, let's look at this. That is what Rasmus sent me. Let's see. All right, uh, it says the automatic brake applies to the brake to each locomotive and to each car on the train as well. It's normally used during train operation to slow start the train. Independent, which applies air brakes on the locomotive only. Okay, look. Brake system. Yeah. Pretty much my diagram, for the most part. Yep. I'll ask a question here and see if we can get it. Are train brakes on when disconnected? I believe they probably should. Yeah, the brakes are always, it's same as a tractor trailer. They they fail safe. I'm trying to think of this way to set it up though. Um, <clears throat> because when I disconnect the train, um, I want them to. What I could do is put an artificial number on the base, essentially. And so what will happen is the problem is when you, so when I disconnect, I should, um, uh, this is the thing, so I'm trying to figure. So essentially, yeah, let's let's update this real quick. And so let's think the thoughts. So um, let's grab hose anchor. All right, so let's set this up a little bit more too. Let's see if I called this trail. Yep. <laughs> I can't put my hands on my on the keyboard correctly today to save my life. My hands are freezing. Um, all right, let's see. <clears throat> all right, so let's go like this. We're gonna add something in here to try to simulate connection and disconnection. All right, so this will be the train. This will be uh, this will be the locomotive. This will be the train. And so, what's going to happen here is that can go. I don't need that anymore. All right, um, let's go. So I want to finish the system up so that it has everything I need. Oh, come on, stop bullshit me. There we go. Okay. All 
All right, so this way I can I can work on these little minutia that it, the little minutia I need to do here. Let's not be rash. What I could do is if the reservoir tank is below a certain, a certain value, it actuates full brakes. Bingo. So that's a fail safe system. So if the, so essentially, um, Look at it. Look at a Rasmus diagram. It's they're essentially working the same as um, tractor trailer brake. No, I won't say the same. They're working pretty close. And so, like, I, I haven't read through the whole thing, but I can pretty much see by the diagram. So let's look real quick. You have essentially um, here's your piston here actuating the brake cylinders here. It's pretty pretty close to tractor trailer system. Air comes in, pushes on the piston, pushes on the on the shoes. Um, you're going to have a system where it's fail safe. So if the air pressure goes down too much, i.e. you leak your reservoir out, it's going to, um, you know, it will apply the brakes. And so you need air pressure in the system to remove the brakes. Um, so you would essentially do it like a tractor trailer. Um, you have a spring. The spring will put the brakes on if there's not enough air pressure in the system. So if the reservoir tank is too low, it's going to spring on the brakes. Let's say you cut an airline on the train, right? You don't want the brakes to go off. You want the brakes to come on, right? You accidentally, let's say you accidentally decouple a car and the car goes running down the rail, right? You want the brakes to come on. So what's gonna happen? You cut the airline, it leaks air out, the reservoir pressure drops, and then that causes it to, um, cause to piss out its air, and then the brakes will come on. All right, so I need to think how to do it. See, the problem is we don't leak the way we should, which is problematic. I can, I'm can. i going to have to put in a leak valve. All right, whatever. i got to put in a leak valve. That's all right. We can do it. It's not not my favorite thing because IRL, they'd have this. Um, it's IRL, they'd leak. See, this is the thing is with hose anchors, in game, if I disconnect this hose anchor, it doesn't leak. It should. It doesn't. All right. So what I need to do is this. So essentially, I'm going to take this, cut you, go like that. Okay, take you, cut this, go like that. Okay. Now what we need to do is do uh, shit, shit on a stick. This is a pain in the ass here. See, it should come out of here. This is the thing. Air should come out of this hose. It won't. We'll test it real quick, but it should. Uh, let me hook this up. I've got, I'm on the right track. We'll figure it out in a second here. Let's get this all plumbed up. Brake tank pressure, float valve, reservoir valve, um, right there. Brakes, brake throttle, right there. So this is gonna be the train brake, uh, rear couple. I'm not gonna, I'm not content with that yet. This loses the compressor. All right, so. This is the problem I have with the way they've got this set up, is these hoses don't bleed, I don't think. So let's check. This tank should be at coming up on 11. It is. Okay. I should be able to pull this hose. Giggity. All right. Should be able to pull this hose, right? And when I open the valve, it should leak. It does not in-game as far as I know. Let's test it. I don't think it does. See, this does not leak. That's that's problem. If that leaked, it would be perfect because what would happen is when I move the hose, when I remove the hose, it should uh, let that reservoir empty and then, um, you know, leak out the system. But unfortunately, it doesn't. What I could do is a button for the uh, open the valve here. So that adds size. So instead of a manual valve, which I, I kind of like a manual valve, but we can't do it. Um, <laughs> shit. They make this, they make it annoying. Like, these should leak. They don't. 
I, I know why they don't do it, because we'd have to have a valve on everything, so I understand it, but it's annoying for my specific application that this doesn't leak. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do it with a switch, which is fine. All right, I'm going to do it with a switch. It has to be done that way. Um, that's fine, though. You know, it, it just it has to be done, so it's like I'm not going to complain about it. Why? You know, that's just the way it's got to be. So what we're going to do here is um, that can this can stay as a hand valve. That's fine. Just, see, I wish there was some remote feature with this. That would be fantastic, but there isn't. All right, that's fine. So what we're going to do here is this, this side has to be a little different. Because I need to trigger it. Yeah. Okay. It's all right. I won't grouch about it. It's it's not going to be perfect as perfect as I'd like it, but it will still be fun. I flew it in there. All right, so this is actually going to work all right. So what's going to happen here is next to this here, we'll put a panel. Okay, not exactly what I like, but it, it's going to work fine. And a, we're going to use a flip switch. And so the flip switch is going to actuate the valve. So this is going to be um, air valve. Okay, flip switch. This will actually work really well, I think. It's it's not exactly what I like. I'd I want it up. It's not going to be a fully manual system anyways, but I'd like to get as manual as possible. So there we go. We have a flip switch. This is going to actuate this valve, which allows air to come from the loco to here. This can have a manual valve here, right? Because the loco breaks, we don't have to worry about. All right. And so this is going to do two functions. Let's go ahead and let's get rid of a bunch of shit in here we don't need. We don't need the compressor. We don't need these. This can go like that. That's going to go in. That's going to take in. The other thing that's nice with this is we do have to use electricity for the uh, valve, but we're going to put a battery on. Oh, fuck you. What did I just do? What did I just do? Brake throttle? Let's just cancel it and then go back in. Getting My phone rang, and it completely distracted me. Compressor. Okay. Logic add node right here. Composite input uh, valve. All right, so the valve panel is going to come in. It's going to do a couple things. One, uh, I need to make that bigger again. You saw bet you. Um, stop. That's going to be the feed valve. Okay. Feed valve. All right, so it's going to do two things. One, when this, uh, when I flip that switch, it's going to open up the valve, which is going to allow uh, the feed valve to open, which will then allow air from the uh, from the loco to go to the cars. Okay. The other thing it's going to do is it's going to open up. Um, let's see. It's going to open up the reservoir valve. So right here, the res valve is right here. And so what we'll do is fucking phone. Sorry, guys. Phone's driving me shithouse right now. All right, this is perfect. So this will actuate the PID, too. So the PID's not constant on. The PID is now actuated by the valve switch. So that will keep the PID from constantly going on and off. Beautiful. Right, and then what we'll do here is we will go ahead and All right, good. We're we're rocking and rolling now. My phone's driving me absolute shit house though. All right, good. So what we're going to do is we're going to read off this, right? Uh standard. And then when uh actually no, let's see. The valve will read there. So when the valve's on, it will read this. Okay, perfect. And so that's going to go 
It's gonna go like that. It's gonna go like this. Beautiful. All right, we're making progress here. All right, gorgeous. So what's gonna happen here is let me let me do it first, and then I could stop. <laughs> uh, let's see. This is gonna be um, this. Disconnect. What are you? Um, All right, gorgeous. So this is what's going to happen. So when we connect the, the uh, car up, we're now talking about the train cars. All right, so when we connect the train cars up, we're going to take the hose and we're going to connect it from the car before it or from the loco to the first car. Let's say loco to the first car. That's going to allow air pressure to go in. So we're going to connect it up. We're going to flip the manual valve on the locomotive. Uh, I might even do a, a switch on that one. Uh, you click the, uh, let's do a switch, then it's consistent. We're going to click the switch on the locomotive. That's going to allow air to go from the locomotive through the hose into the first car. We're then going to also click the feed valve on the first car. That's going to allow the air from the locomotive to come into the reservoir tank. All right. It's also going to turn on the PID. And what it's going to also do is it's going to cause us to go from the park brake state, which is the valve all the way open, which causes all the air pressure from the reservoir tank to go into the brake tank, telling the brakes to go on. And so instead of the brakes being on, it's going to go to whatever the locomotive sets, which is now this. All right. So let's see. Ah, uh, shit. We gotta, okay, that's fine. We got to read it off the loco. Um, that's all right. We'll get that. So I'll fix the panel. Perfect. So that is now, that's got that problem fixed. All right, now we got to change some other things on this panel. So we're not going to be reading this throttle here anymore. Um, this is going to now have to read an input off of, let's see, where is this? Right here. Brake throttle is going to be, oh, panel. Brake throttle, where are you at there, guy? You're going to be composite input. This is going to be, um, uh, let's see. Okay, this is going to read off of, I would say, the connectors. Yeah, let's just do the connectors. So, I'm trying to think. Can we, can we send through these connectors? Fine, we should be able to. We should be able to. Let's do uh, connector M. So, um, do train. And we'll send the brake information through the train connectors. All right, so that there is going to be train connectors. And whatever channel that's going to be. For now, we'll call it channel one. And that's going to write that. Okay, beautiful. All right, and so that's fine. This is, here needs to now read out that information, which is good. Let's go through, out there. Bingo. Logic add. Composite output. This is going to be train connectors. And so this is the brake portion of it. So this is going to read out the, I need another node in here. That's good. This is going to go there. Maybe be um, number input. This is going to be train brake throttle. Okay. Train brake throttle. Probably shouldn't call them throttles in case I want to use something else on different locos, but whatever. All right. And for now, at least um, until I figure out the, the numbering scheme, we're going to go right number one. And that's going to go like this to the connector. All right. And so it's going to read out whatever the throttle in the cab of the D2 reads. That's going to send it through channel one through the connectors. All right. All right. I 
one of these is going to have to be down. One's going to have to be up. That's fine. Try to figure out the angle on this shit. Oh, that's annoying. Um, trying to set this up kind of like visually too, because eventually I want to release this and then, uh, you know, you'd be able to see what the hell it's doing. God damn, these are going to be tall. All right, whatever. Make them the right height, and then we're good. All right. Fuck you. Just turn the right direction. Oh, my God. It's annoying me. My phone's what's really annoying me. <laughs> All right, let's see. That will be a connector there. All right, that will come out. That will stick to there. That has a gap there. This will be that, like that. Okay, good. This is now, we can, what can I get rid of that? See ya. All right. And then this is going to get the composite will go to here. All right, this will go uh, from here to train connectors. That's valve panels there. Let's see, what else do we change on that? Feed valve is now there. All right, gorgeous. And so that should now read that info out correctly. All right. They're too, too close by one. Okay. And it needs to go up one. All right, good. So it's not going to look like, you know, we already have them established. The connectors work well. Uh, it's just going to be... Just going to be set up like this so that uh, when they connect, that's where the train brake information. Because it needs to read what my throttle is set as. Because um, I can't really do this with air pressure. With just standard air pressure in game. All right. So now these get connected. There we go. All right. That should send the brake information through here. All right. So let's go ahead and I want to hook up the... I need this uh, throttle here. That's in the... Right, train brake. All right, there we go. All right, good. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. This is, a, this is the best looking train. All right, those are connected. So our trains are connected. The hoses are on. First thing we do is uh, we'll open this valve manually for now. This air pressure now should be, um, it's not leaking in yet. So the pump should come on when I open the train valve because we're losing air pressure, right? Pump comes on, beautiful. This fills it up. All right, so it might take time. You have 10 cars, it's going to take time. And you'll notice this. Um, this is going to be cool for our gauges in the cab because this actually works in Derail Valley and it works in the Real Locos, of course, is you have how much brake pressure you actually have in there as a needle. And so because of the new pressure system that people hate for no reason, um, the air pressure actually leaves this tank, goes through the hose and goes in here and drops. And so that automatically kicks on the compressor. And then that automatically uh, will read how much pressure we have in the entire train. That's the cool thing about this that I think a lot of those people don't understand. Is this, and what will happen is we'll have a T-piece off of here, which I'll make. There'll be a T-piece off of here that goes all the way out to the rest of the train cars. All right. And so what happens then is all the train cars are in unison at the same pressure. And so... What that does is um, at, you know, we can actuate all of the train cars and we can read the actual pressure of all of the cars. And that's really cool. All right. So that and that's how it works in real life. That's how you know the pressure of all of your cars is because the pressure goes back and forth through the hose. It maintains equal pressure throughout. As all of the cars pressure drops, it will read in the it will read in the gauge that, hey, some of the train cars are at lower pressure. It's building them up. It's so we maintain equal pressure. Same thing with tractor trailer as you as you uh, as you load up more trailers and you need to fill them up. All right, let me read this message here real quick on my phone. Gun pinged. 
All right, guys, let me take a quick coffee break. I need to see why my phone's going off constantly. All right, I'll be uh, right back, guys. Let me just do this. But we're making good progress on this. I feel like we're going to have a cool system at the end of it. All right, be right back. All right, so I am all set here. So uh, how's it going there, uh, Pochi Bob one How are you? All right, good. So this is set up, I think, well. Um, so, you know, again, we're going to be able to read the pressure throughout all the cards, which is cool, and that um, that's nice. And so we should be able to get the gauges to work correctly in this. The information should pass through. So we're going to do some testing here. It should be passing whatever this break here is all the way through to actuate these so um, if I go ahead let's start running some of these tests all right so this should be independent break should only be controlling this so this should be at zero still gorgeous okay good let's go ahead and flip this valve and this this set of train wheels should go to one well you know we should have maximum braking on these all right it's not maximum but we have enough brake to keep the train held that's fine all right good so you notice we've got something on there uh, that's because of the p-value on the PID, I would say, it, and so it has some variance. I could change it to make it perfect, but I don't need it perfect. I need it to be working well, and real life is not perfect. So that's good. We have braking when the valve is closed. Braking will occur. Okay, good. Now it should go to zero, uh, which is should be whatever this throttle is reading, which it is. All right, now let's start increasing this throttle. And the brakes go up. All right, good. Let's decrease. Let's take some brake pressure off. And we decrease our brake pressure. Gorgeous. All right, and it's all working realistically via air moving back and forth. This is all pressure update stuff. I know how terrible the pressure update is. But we can now do things like this that are mechanically working with minimal actual, like, fakeage. Like, I still have to fake throwing the number through here. But for the most part, it's the pressure that's actually actuating what we're doing. Uh, brakes come all the way off. And the brakes come all the way up. Nice. We want them faster. Uh, we can't really do more fast than that because uh, it's the actual blowout valve is now set to go to a maximum of 1. but um, Or 7.5. I think I have 0.75. So we could go to 1. But that's going to be your max rate unless you want to put a second blowout valve on there. All right, good. So that is gorgeous. That is working really, really well now. Now let's go ahead and we will. So this needs a T on it. And this will go out to the rear car. So pretty simple there. Um, and you would have all of this shite. Do I need this? I don't need this valve, though. So if I can get rid of that valve, I really don't need that valve. I don't need that valve, so let's get rid of it. I don't actually need that valve. That valve is fake. To the main thing the valve needs to do is read to the car behind it. That's really all it has to do is it has to actuate this. Uh, no. Let me see. Let me see if... I'm trying to think. Um... Let's actually put them back in. 
Let's do it. Let's, uh, I don't want to overly fake if I don't have to. Let's leave, let's leave those in. Alright, uh, shit, this one's gonna, the problem is that I need omnidirectional valves. Let's see if they work. Sometimes these will actually work as omni valves, sometimes they won't. It's kind of annoying. That's the problem is, um, yeah, they're not gonna work as omnis if I put these in. So let's, for the night, have the time change our mind. Um, let's take these out because they're not gonna work both ways properly. Let's do that. And then what we'll do is we'll just, we'll uh, take these. And this one's gonna have to be two. If I can find the fricker. That has to be two. So this will also, this will be helpful from a game standpoint of not actually, well, we will if it, if the, uh, shit. I'm going to add a condition in here, so let's see. Uh, yeah, I'm going to add a condition. I'm going to make this a little bit more realistic so that it works. Uh, let's go first take care of this panel here. So let's see. Um, yeah, let's do this. Um, that all right let's do that and then I want another condition in here so let's see uh, we want this here and I need another ore on this so what I'm gonna do is if this uh, tank break pressure here minus this uh, where's the minus on there Something's wrong with this. This is fucked up. No, that's fine. That's that's fine. That works. Let me try something. So let's say we have zero. So let's say the tank brake pressure is at, uh, let's say, 0 0.99, 0 0.99. Uh, and then it's minus 0 0.99. That would be zero divided by uh, what the hell ever Y is. Um, Y is 11, zero, perfect. Let's do this. So what happens is if this value here um, reads zero, um, if this value, oh shit, that's not gonna work, is it? Break tank. No, well, I want reservoir tank. Never mind here. That goes there. Um, reservoir tank. Shit. What am I doing here? I'm trying to think. Uh, I've got an idea. Okay. All right, so essentially what I want to do is if there's no air in here, I want this to actually, um, there's no air in this. I actually want this to, um, to do the tank. So let me, I'm trying to think of a cooler way to do this here. Let's see, where's the reservoir tank? Res tank pressure right here. Zero one point one. 
Let's see. Um, the fuck is this up here now? Oh, right, that's this can go. This is the. Um, that's the pump. Okay, there we go. That's the pump. Okay. There's blow a valve, blow a valve here. Okay, let's see. Okay, let's go. I'm gonna change this, so. I'm gonna make, try to make this more mechanical, so. So this will open the feed valve and turn that on. This is gonna do something different completely. All right, so if the, if the reservoir tank pressure is between zero and 1.1, which would be standard atmospheres, Let's, uh, let's, nah, 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 nah. Let me do a, let me do a function here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this even more annoying. This will work better, but it's, again, it's gonna be annoying. <laughs> let's see. So if the standard atmospheric barometer, let's see, uh, I need a big function on this. So we want the uh, reservoir tank pressure plus the standard standard atmosphere barometer. All right, this is going to be a formula and a half here. Um, let's see, standard atmosphere barometer. So let's see, if Z minus X Z minus X um, Let's see. All right, Z minus X. So what I'm doing here is the absolute value of Z minus X. And then if it's there. And then let's see, um, zero to, let's say point. Let's say point five. All right, so essentially what this is going to do is by doing this, it's going to give me the absolute value. So let's say do some math real quick we'll do it so uh, z minus x so let's say the reservoir tank pressure is 11 minus the standard atmosphere which is one that's going to equal 10 all right so 10 does not 10 is not between 0 and 0.5 right uh, 0 0.5 what do i want 0.5 is too much um point no point 0.5 is fine um so that's not between there now let's say that the reservoir tank empties out it's going to go to standard atmosphere right so Let's say the reservoir tank is 1.1. And let's say that the standard atmosphere is 0.99. So it's going to be Z minus uh, 0.99. That's going to give us 0.11. Okay? The absolute value is always positive. So if one of these went low, that's why I'm doing that. Um, so now we're going to have 0.11. So 0, 0.11 is between 0 and 0.5, right? That is going to open up the... Um, uh, it's now not what I want to do. Let's see, stand by. Uh, I th I think I'm 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 close to where I need to be here. Um, the difference is this is now going to go like that. 
All right, so what's going to happen now is I'm trying to make this more mechanical. So what's going to happen is when the valve is turned on, either the front of the car or the rear of the car, it turns on the pit and opens the feed valves. Feed valves. Um, do we need the feed valves? I do not think we do at this point because I'm going to do this new system. I'm doing this to try to get rid of the feed valves. So let's get rid of the feed valves. So we don't need the feed valves anymore. We probably will, and I'll probably have to add them. All right, so what's going to happen now is if we do click the one or the two valve in the front or the rear, it's going to turn the pit on. That's it. All right. And then what's going to happen is when they're not on, I want to open up the... Um, let's see. Stand by. All right, so this is set up to automatically work that. Let's see. <laughs> All right, so this is this here is a condition for uh, if we run out of air. If we run out of um, air pressure completely, let's say the tank leaks, then we should have the brakes come on. Okay, that's what we want. All right, and so what we're going to do here is we're going to force the brakes to come on. Let's see. All right. Ah, shit, I think. Now I should I should do this differently here. This this works fine. This is gonna do the um, this is gonna set us up all right. Um, let's just do that reservoir valve there. Get rid of that. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do the park brake a little bit differently here. So right here on brakes, this is gonna be an ultimate brake value here. And so what we'll do is we'll grab this. So I'm gonna do this a little differently. That that is um, that's fine. This is still good. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do two conditions here. All right. So what's gonna happen is if if the air pressure goes to zero, let's say we leak the tanks. Uh, what I was trying to do is I was gonna open up the reservoir and the blow valve if um we're not connected and that that would be what actually turns the brakes on i might do that let's do that actually Trap sink reservoir and blow a valve. Um, okay, I've got an idea on how to do this. I'm trying to do it mechanically, so it's it's taking me a little bit of time to figure out how I want to do this mechanically. I can do this all with the blow a valve. I'm thinking. All right, let's do this. All right, so essentially if the air pressure is very, very low in the tanks, we want the brakes to come hard on. So we're going to get giggity, giggity. So we're going to go like this, and then what will happen is we'll go like that. And then we'll make it so that this is the park brake. Okay, park brake is going to be a value of one. So it'll be heart brakes 100% on. And so if the air pressure gets too low, it's going to do that. All right. And so we're going to force the air pressure to go very, very low when we disconnect. All right. So when we disconnect, what's going to happen is, uh, so if these are, either of these are not on, all right, it's going to open up the blowout valve. And that will piss out the reservoir valve. So let's see. No, that will piss out the um, the brake. 
So I don't want reservoir tank on this. I want brake tank pressure on this. That makes more sense anyway. So if the brake tank pressure and then reservoir tank, is that doing anything here? No. The reservoir tank can actually go on this. And so what's going to happen is if I don't have either of the valves go going here, it's going to open up the uh, blow-up valve. So if either of those are not on, we're going to go ahead and we will feed the blow-up valve a one. And what we'll do is we'll actually get rid of this knot. And the blow-up valve will be the standard, uh, will be the on value. Okay, like that. And so now this is going to be more realistic. It's It was annoying to get this all set up. but um, the, the So what this is going to be is this is going to be um, break, disconnect, low rate. All right. So what this is going to do is here, let's walk you through it. All right. So when I disconnect the system, so I pull it, I, I disconnect my cars, right? What's going to happen is... Um, we're going to get a uh, situation here where um, I should make it off this. Okay, I can't do it off that. Um, I'd have to put a connected. So I'd, I'd have to put two connected. So what's going to happen is if I shut both valves off here, what's going to happen is it's going to open up the blowout valve completely. The blowout valve is going to be at one. And so that's going to cause all the air to drain out of the reservoir tank, if all the uh, out of the uh, brake tank. Yep, it's going to cause all the air to drain out of the brake tank, which will uh, then cause the pressure to go down very, very low, which will cause the brakes to come on full. Bingo. Good. That will work, and then I can get rid of reservoir tank pressure because I don't need the reservoir tank pressure anymore. Because that's commanded at the locomotive anyway. All right, let's update this. I know it's probably confusing everybody, but we'll, we'll walk through it. I'll make sure it works. All right, so let's go ahead and spawn. All right, so we uh, currently both valves are down, right? Uh, both switches are down, so that should cause this valve to be 100% open. It is. Okay, so now because that valve is 100% open, right, there is... Um, the air pressure is the same as ambient. Ambient's 99.64, 99.64. If we look here, that is going to give us full brakes, right? The brakes are on. All right, let's click one of these valves on. So we're now, this one should be full of air, right? That's full of air. We open the valve on the train, on the locomotive. We open the valve on the train car. This starts to fill with air, right? One of these is switches is on. All right, and now what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead and we're going to look, and we have um, a fluid valve of 0.75, and the brakes are at 1. That is good, I think. That fucking, what the fuck? Why is that at 1 still? Okay, because this is not opened yet. So I should run off the reservoir tank, I think. Let's let's do this differently. I'm sorry, this is probably annoying, but we're gonna get we're gonna try to make the system as good as possible. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Um, let's see. All right, we're adding res tank back. I'm gonna read res tank here. All right, so let's see. And then we want to do blow up valve, and we want to do the reservoir valve like this. A top number, top number. Bottom number is going to be the same as this. Okay.
All right, so what this is gonna do now is when we disconnect, right? When I disconnect, so I pull the airline, what it's gonna do, you know, and, and flip the valve, what it's gonna essentially do is it's gonna open up both the blow up valve and it's gonna also open up the reservoir valve. Because it's opening up both the reservoir valve, which goes from the reservoir tank to the brake tank, and the blow up valve, which goes from the brake tank to the atmosphere, it's gonna drain all the air out of the system when we disconnect, okay? So we disconnect our hoses, it uh, relieves all the air pressure. So all the air pressure is relieved, that will cause the brakes to come on. So that's more realistic and um, should run fine. So let's go ahead and connect this, John. All right, so we're gonna fill up. So you notice the reservoir, oh shit. Why is that filling? Because I didn't put a valve. I gotta put valves back in if I do this. All right, that's fine, we'll do that. That's more realistic anyway. Ah, Christ. This is the problem I had before. We, let's see if the valves will actually push air both ways. Let's do a quick test here. This is why I did it the other way. So this here should be backwards. So we see flew it out. We're trying to push it in. Let's see if it pushes in. This is going to have to make me add two valves. All right, let me read some chat for a little bit. i got to figure this out. Why no Lua? Because I don't know Lua, and I don't want to do Lua. I have no desire to do it, Lua. Again, I don't need like within 10 decimal places of responsiveness. This is this is called the real world. In the real world, the real world systems are not as responsive as you're going to get in some magical simulator. You know. I'm from the northeast. Well, you got to you know, it's better to learn it. That's you're missing like 70 to 90% of the game if you don't build How's it going there, Hassan? That's good, uh, Owl, how are you? All right, so let's see. I'm going to test these valves out real quick. Um, the valves are going to be the best way to do it. I'm trying to make it realistic here, and that's can be problematic. Um, let's see. The nice thing about this is I can control the valves independently, though. Um, let's see. Valve... Front. I don't mind the panel being big because, like, this is the thing, too, is, like, this is not a tiny little thing. These are going to be big-ass rail cars, so it doesn't really matter um, if they are, if, if some of these microcontrollers are big, so that doesn't bother me. I just need these valves to work um, for front and back, and that's the thing. So we'll do one is front... Two is rear. Okay. Let's see if these will go omnidirectional. Sometimes I think they do. Sometimes they don't. So I got to check them. Um, let's see. Where's the valve on this one? Because the reason is like the, the, the rail car could be going either direction. So I need the valves to work either direction. We'll see if that happens here. All right. Let's try it. All right, we open this. Um, air should be going from there into the hose and then nowhere. Why is this filling? The valve's closed. Okay, these are open. That's fine. This is just going up to atmospheric pressure. These two are open now, as you can see. So it's filling up to atmospheric pressure. That's perfectly fine. The brakes should be hard on. They're not. What the fuck? All right. Um, I didn't move reservoir tank, maybe. Let me check. Did I plug it in? I didn't plug it in. That's why. It's reading zero. That's why. Uh, tank pressure right there. And then let me make sure this is fixed in here. So that should read the reservoir tank right there. So reservoir tank. Main, okay, that's why. It was it was outside the 0.5 threshold because I didn't have it plugged in. All right. Let's go ahead. Let's connect everything. Oh, come on, dude. Come on, dude. Crap. All right. There we go. All right, so air should uh, be building up because of the pump. It's not going through here yet because the valve is closed. It should be equalizing to the air pressure 
You'll notice that will keep climbing until it hits to about 0.9964. That's good. All right, now I'm going to open up this valve. Let's see if it will flow backwards. It does. Gorgeous. Okay, these are working as omnidirectionals. That's fine. That's beautiful. That's what I was hoping. Uh, that makes the system work now. All right, so now we look. Brakes are off. We now have air pressure from the train. Because we're getting air pressure from the train, it's now going to read what this is. That's set to zero. Okay, let's increase this. Uh, you suck. Why are you not running there? That's a problem. What's going on here now? That's open. Blow valve open too? Nope. That should be, why is that not running the brakes off of there now? Let me check it, see what, what I screwed up here. Right, if it's, um, <clears throat> let's see. All right, here's the train connector reading one, one times Z, which is the reference reservoir tanks max amount. I flipped the valve, so if one of those should be going, that should be running. Okay, that's fine. So that should be going to the reservoir valve. Okay. Blow up valve should be running off of this. Okay, so the blow up valve is closed and the reservoir valve is open. Why were we not getting a proper break amount though? So it should be taking off the brake tank pressure. That should be running. So why the hell is that not working now? All right, let's uh, spawn and see what the hell. But the valves are working correctly. All right, so let's test the f let's test the forward again. So let's see, we have. Brakes are at zero. Come on. Brakes are up. Brakes are down on the loco. Okay, that's good. Now we want to um, go ahead. We're connected here. Let's connect that. All right, good. So let's see where we're at. So this should be reading one because we're currently disconnected. We have not pumped air in there yet, so we're parked. The train car is now connected, but we have not hooked up the air system yet. So because we've not hooked up the air system yet, this reservoir tank should be at atmospheric pressure, which it is, because this valve is open and this valve should be open, which causes this one to drain down to nothing, essentially, because it's it's 0.99 minus the same value, so it should be zero. So because that's zero, the brakes are hard on. Now, when I open up the valve, we should be getting air pressure. And because this is zero, we should get zero brakes. All right, so let's open the valve. Let's open the valve. This fills this up. This causes this one to close, and that should be closed. The uh, blowout valve should also be closed at the moment. Why are we, okay, that's, no, that's fine. Uh, we're blowing out value because we're currently don't have the brakes applied. Okay, perfect, that's fine. <clears throat> Actually, this should have the brakes on. This should have the brakes on because this is now the brake tank is equal to that. What's going on with the variable valve? Let's see. Having a problem with the variable. This was working earlier too. I got to figure out what's up now. That that sh variable valve, I don't know why the, the blow up valve is now is lit up. Okay. So that's fine. Um, okay, let's see. So it's 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 reading out 0.75. I don't know why it's reading out 0.75. Why is it reading out 0.75? Let's try getting rid of this zero, this negative, and see if it works. Okay. Try to set this up. Problem is it gets complicated, it takes forever to test. All right. Um, all right, brakes should be on 100% because we don't have any air pressure in the 
Um, it's all about the brake tank. So the brake tank is empty, so that causes it to spring the brakes on as though you as though you cut an airline. So that's on. All right, and then we when we fill up, uh, it should fill this tank up. It does. Okay, good. Tank fills up. This should be closed. Okay. And then this should be, why is this not closing is the question. That's closed. Okay, good. It was the negative was wrong. All right, so that's now closed. All right. I have to check it, though. It might screw up later. All right, so now we should have zero breaks. We have, that's good. Okay. Fuck, it should not be good. Let me see. No, that's all right. That's, that works. Okay. Now let's go ahead and we'll apply some uh, breaks. Okay, so that should open up the uh, reservoir valve. It does filling the brake tank. This should be... All right, I see what the issue is. I've got an idea where it is. So this negative... We're having a problem when we... When we um, still having a problem when we're sitting on brakes. So let's quickly do something here. Let's do a quick test. All right, so now we are um, we're parked, trains connected. I have the brakes off, so the brakes should be off here. All right, that's keeping the brakes. What the fuck? Yeah, that's now it's all right. Let's see. Now let's add some brakes. See what the blow valve does. The blow valve is currently perfect. Okay, that's that's working. No, you're not, are you? What the fuck is this doing? That should be letting... Okay, why are we not getting break off this? Interesting. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I don't know why the blow... Okay, the blow valve's closed. This is adding pressure in. That's fine. That's all working. But it's not sending any information to the brake... To the wheels here, so... Let's see what the hell is up with that. Um, did I screw something up there? Let's check the physical connection. That is brakes. Okay. Let's change the name of that. They're starting to get confusing because I have too many brakes in there. Brakes. Train wheels. All right. Let's see what the hell the deal is here. All right. So let's see. The tank, the tank brake pressure. So let's see. Uh, it's this. It's got to be this clamp here. Let's see. Um... No, let's see. That's Y. Oh, I don't have Y connected. I fucked up and pulled Y. Stand by. I gotta figure out what 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 that's supposed to be. It, that's why it screwed up as I pulled that Y connection. All right, so it's X minus Z. So it'd be the tank brake pressure minus the standard atmospheres. So let's say it's up to eleven. 11 minus 0.9964, so we're at 10. Okay, and then I have it divided by Y, and so I'm divided by zero, so of course it's coming up as zero, so that makes sense. I'm trying to remember what the hell I had it connected to. Let's get rid of that uh, divided by Y. I think when I change the system, I don't need that anymore. Oh, it's, oh, uh, you know what? It, I know what it's supposed to be. Divided by Y still. And that's supposed to be connected to the, where is it? Uh, reservoir Max Atmosphere is right here. <clears throat> All right, so what that does is it converts it from, like, a big number, like 11, down to 1. All right, so let's say we have, <clears throat> let's say we have a uh, brake tank pressure of 11 atmospheres. All right, we're going to subtract the standard atmospheres of 0.9964. That gives us 10.0036 divided by, okay, 11 equals 0.9. Bingo. That was it. That got disconnected. That's why we're having all these freaking issues. All right, good. We're good there now. That should be good. All right, um, let's test it, put it through its paces. So it's it's more of a mechanical system, but you got to make sure that all it's going to read all the mechanicals and then tra transfer them. All right, so this should be parked, right? We're parked. We we're on a hill. We don't want the train car sliding down the hill and killing everybody. So it has brakes at 100%. Okay, good. We're now gonna 
if I flick the valve, it still should be at 100% because no air went in. This is actually physically actuated by the air now. So the air w is not going in yet. Um, so the valve, it's not like a fake button that's doing it. It's the actual the air pressure that will cause this to, um, to be able to release the brakes. All right, now it's going to release the brakes because the train brake is reading zero. So we're going to open the valve. As the air pressure comes up, bingo, there we go. Air brakes come up. The uh, air pressure goes in, and it shuts off the park brake. Okay, good. So that should be good. Let's see. All right, that's fine. We're now, uh, you know, we're now have no brakes uh, on. Okay, let's add a little brake. All right, we expect the brakes to go up. Bingo, the brakes go up. All right, good. We want more brakes. All right, brakes go up more. All right, we want no brakes. And there we go. So perfect. It's working now. Um, that's good. All right. My voice is going because of allergies and this bullshit. <laughs> it takes a little while to get this going, but I, I want this system. You know, the reason I'm spending so much time going over these systems is I'm trying to make kind of like a definitive system. And the plan is this is how I get interested in the game is by making a system like this. I can then go and I want to build 20 different parts. I want to build rail cars up to the standard i want to build locomotives up to the standard but you have to get it right the first time because if i don't get it right now i have 20 rail cars that no longer work and i have 20 locomotives and if i want to change something i have to change them on 20 locomotives it's an absolute pain in the balls so it's better to get the system working right now and i think it is and so what we can do is let's do this so we're going to do a test run here where uh, the nice thing with this setup is this. What I'm going to do is, uh, and the reason why I'm setting up like this, eventually I'd like to release this to you guys. And you'll be able to take this and you'll be able to, you know, set up your systems here. And so here's, this is another rail car. Okay. And so what we can do is I'm just going to hook up the airlines. All right. And so there we go. So now we have two rail cars hooked up to the locomotive. We have car one and car two okay and so we want uh, all of them to work now i have to set up something really quick here let's see uh these should interlink so i need to check the interlink sometimes this works sometimes it doesn't uh where this one here so i i should feed out to the rear here so let's go in this panel here and this one should feed out so I really, I, I don't mind making this too big again. It's going on a locomotive, man. All right, it's going on a rail car. These are big. So I don't mind going really big microcontrollers on this stuff. Um, this is to rear connector. Okay. Uh, let's see if I can do without it. I've tried this before and it hasn't always worked. Let's try it real quick. So what we want to do is here's the connector coming in. And it's going to go to there. Let's try to go from here to there. Sometimes it doesn't like this and it freaks out. Let's try it. All right. So let's... What the fuck happened here? You're not connected to shit. So that's not going to work. How did that not get connected, man? This is pissing me off now. How did... Why? Oh, I didn't go high enough. I missed it by one block and I cut, cut off the... Um, pivot that's why all right so that goes to there <clears throat> and then this is gonna go like what um that goes to the back one here and then this one would move on to the rear connector so theoretically we'd have another connector here this would go through to there as well all right and so let's see if this all works sometimes you can't daisy chain these connectors they they freak out and so we'll see if it works Sometimes you have to go through the microcontroller to then transfer them. All right, so we have the locomotive connected to car one. We have car one connected to car two. All right, so we expect that the brakes on car one and car two are at 100% because there's no air in the system. The air has failed. So if we leaked all the air out, if we damage one of our pipes and the air leaks out, it is going to turn the brakes on like it should. So let's say we accidentally crash into something, the air leaks out of the tanks, the brakes should come on. All right, like it would in real life. All right. So that should work. All right, good. 
So brakes on, brakes on. Next. Um, we're going to let air go from here into car one. So car one now has air. Brakes should come off. Brakes should stay on in car two. Bingo. Brakes are on in car two. I should actuate the brakes. Brakes on car one should actuate. Brakes on car two should still be 100%. Beautiful. All right. Now let's actuate two. So we're going to go valve. All right. Now the valve's open, but no air is going through because I have not opened the second valve. Brakes should still be 100%. When I open this valve, air should come flooding in, and this one should now be matching the other one. All right. Air floods in. Bingo. This is going to go to whatever that one's running at. Move, dickhead, move, dickhead. All right, 0 0.42, 0 0.42, gorgeous. I want more brakes. We expect both train cars to break equally, 0.7, point, uh, it's coming up. As you can see, there's some lag time, right? The air has to get from the system. It's actually air-based, right? Because it's air-based, it's going to have realistic lag like you would have IRL. Because we have air uh, lag. And so this pump is now having to um, make sure the pressure is up to run all the all the uh, different cars. All right. 0 0.69. 0 0.69. Gorgeous. So this is now working realistically. So there is going to be some lag in the system. The back car of the train will take longer to apply its brakes than the front car because it has to wait for the air to go from here, through 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 here, all the way through. So the, the brakes on the back of the train are going to take longer to apply than the brakes on the front. Now, when we drop the brake, it's going to take longer for the air to come off on here than it is for here because the air, well, not really, the air is bleeding through. It's an electrical connection. But, uh, yeah, so this works realistically now. I love it. That's great. So there's zero. Brakes are off. Brakes are off. We should be able to add 100 cars to this and make it work. So, beautiful. All right, let's save this. I have yet to save it. Now I want to go back and work on the tractor stuff. <laughs> Train. Um, brake. All right, this is why, like, you know, I get a little bit annoyed when, uh, when you get people who who want like the pressure update just to disappear and then to roll it back is that sucks for people like me who are actually in, in thrilled by taking these systems and making cool shit out of them. And there's a bunch of us who love to do this. I get it that some people don't, but I think the devs have reached a reasonable equilibrium now where if you don't understand the pressure systems, you can still watch a five minute tutorial and learn enough to do the tiny, uh, not complex things you want to do. And if you uh, really love complex engineering and mechanics, you can do the things you want to do. Um, so they've made the floor low enough where I think most people can figure it out or ask for a little bit of help and get that little bit of help, and they can make their shit work. And then the ceiling is high enough that people like me can go through these systems, and it will be rewarding enough to do and make complex real systems. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm happy with. And it annoys me when they when people want to oh just make it simple just make it simple just make it simple because the problem with that is the floor is very low and the ceiling is very low and you have that tiny little bit between the floor and the ceiling and that will lead to boredom and I that's why I'm a big advocate of like the people like the floor might have raised a little bit the floor raised like one foot and the ceiling stayed the same. And what the people are asking for it to do is the ceiling to come way down and the floor to go down. And it's like, you're going to make it where there's not enough to do. And that's why at that when I hear people doing that, it's kind of annoying. It's like, no, no, no. The pressure update is really good if you start to actually play with the mechanics and learn it. Because this is all mechanical, except for this brake number. Everything else is mechanical. Like, each of these systems work independently, mechanically, based on the pressure of the tank values. And that is, to me, is super cool. You know, that is that makes the system work correctly, and I love it. All right, let's read some chat. <clears throat> oh, thank you there, Hassan. I appreciate it. 
Yep, I'm making a, uh, it, it's a train braking system. So it's it's based off actual air pressure. It works realistically how they should work, so. Oh, will it? Uh, but do you know what the number is, Rasmus? All right, so I think the air brake system is pretty good. Um, let me see if there's anything anything I need to clean up. Um, you know, so a lot of this is going to get revamped too. So this is now like my test bed. And as I actually test it on the DE2, which is going to be the test bed for all my train systems, I will then come back to this and edit it. Like I'll, I'll just take the microcontroller from the DE2, drag it in, paste it, and uh, re recouple it because that will get us there. All right, so let's see. This is good. All right, so what we want to do is grab the DE2 back. Um, I think, I don't know if this is the, uh, no, this is not the most updated version. So I know we got away away from the DE2 for a while there. But we're going to be able to get back now. I wanted to get that system going. Um, so that's good. Let's go ahead and grab the latest version of the DE2. All right, and that's what we'll do is we'll move it forward. And we will grab the brake system that I just made and this will get put in and so just the front's going in so just this is going in so hopefully this this like the reason I like to diagram these systems out is this will show you how to hook it up in there and you can actually drag the components and put them inside and so this makes it easy for you to set your system up um, if you want to you know set this up so um, all right, so what we need here is we need to, what I'm actually going to do is we don't have these systems yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them. If you cut them, it, they keep their connections. So this is a good way to save some time is you just drag this in and cut it. And so we cut the, um, the loco systems here. All right, and then we want, so um, there's, there's a couple things I could do here. One. I could do, which I probably will do. I'm going to do it. I'm not going to do a pump. I'm going to do an impeller. Um, yeah, I'll do an impeller. Let me see. Do I do an impeller? Um, I may or may not. I might just do it with the pump. Because the problem is if I do an impeller, then I have to add a one-way valve. And then I have to add another valve. I'm just going to do a pump. So at this point, I'm just doing pumps. All right, so we're going to go ahead and grab this. This is going to go in the engine compartment. It could go either way. It could go in front, it could go in the rear. Uh, rear, we probably have more room. There's just a generator and some bats in here. We could put the air brake system in here. Um, I want to leave a little space in the engine bay. So let's go like that. Okay. All right. And then from there, we need to add, um, we need to go uh, to the reservoir. So I'm going to, I'm going to recolor this. I don't want this. Um, doesn't matter. I'll keep it the same color for now. And so I'm just cutting it because they're pre-connected. So that just makes it a lot easier. All right, so this needs to go, and this is going to go. Um, that's fine right there. All right, there we go. So we have our, our uh, reservoir tank for that. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to start going forward and aft for the um, air valves. So let's see. So I think what we're going to do is go like that. And so let's see if, if this is coupled, that will put, I'm trying to see what side the air valve goes on. The air valve, if it's on this side, we want them on the same side um, so that they couple up correctly. Actually, they go counter on the, um, they go counter. 
I think on the real one in Derail Valley. So let's go counter like that. And then the, the air hose will sling across. Let's do that. I like that better, I think. So it'll be opposite. So it'll be on this side and then on that side. Yes, let's do that. Um, we want a hose. Let's get the black. Uh, let's get this black color back. All right, hose. Okay, and then panel. And then I'm now I can go ahead and we'll actually grab the real panels uh, here. I, I, I didn't do panels for this, so let's grab a set here. Let's copy these. So I do need to put valves on this uh, front segment too, so we'll keep that in mind. And then this one here. Good. All right, so that's going to do that. And then these will need valves. That's that there. And we should have plenty of room. Okay. Okay. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Not in a million years could I have planned that, and it just happened. That's awesome. goes right where it needs to. That's hilarious. All right, and then so from there into the – so the brake reservoir is going to be um, – we'll do one. So that's going to be – let's see. That needs to go directly, and then we'll pull off. So I'll just do a quick pipe in, and then I'll join the other pipe. So let's do – cut here for now all right that's plenty I think that's funny that they line they happen to line up that's pretty good it's a little things that please me <coughs> We're gonna grab a pipe. We're gonna go a, a T piece enclosed here. All right, so this connects the air systems. Okay. So that right there is the reservoir tank. All right. And then this here, um, let's go. And this can be, uh, let's see, where are we at here? Are we almost there? We're almost there. Okay. This is a little bit tighter, I think, in, in the back here. And again, the valves don't matter. I was able to blow through the um, opposite side, so we're good. Okay. All right, so that is now plumbed in there where that is set. So um, we have air going from the uh, rear up into the compressor system into the reservoir tank, which then comes down and it will push into the uh, it'll go go out, and then it will go out, so we can uh, connect either side. Bingo, that's good. All right, then from there, we need the uh, blow-up valve, and we need the brake valve. So what I'm going to do here is, I think we're going to put them... The problem is we need threes. So let's see. I can't build... Can, oh, I can build on top. Gorgeous. I can build on top. That's awesome. Okay. 
All right, so let's go ahead. Let's cut a T piece here. We only need one uh, brake valve on this on each vehicle, essentially, or brake. Uh, yeah, valve and tank. I'm just going to connect it up manually instead of keeping and going and pulling parts. All right, so here is the brake uh, tank. This is what actually simulates the um, brake. So the pressure of the brake system there. Okay. And then, ooh, I think we might be able to fit it in there, right, like it is. Okay, and then we'll do a valve. This is the blow-up valve right here. And this is this here is for the um, this is for the what is it called independent brake, which is the uh, brakes for the locomotive itself. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll start plumbing this in here. So this is here is going to be brakes. There's the control S to fuck me again. Annoying. Loco reservoir tank pressure. Loco brake tank pressure. Presser brakes. Loco. Just a couple naming things there, just so I can more easily find and huck shit up. All right, good. Um, train brake throttle. So that's going to be, where are you at there, guy? Um, I'm trying to see where I'm standing here. That's this one. This is here is the independent brake right there. Okay. Blow-up valve is now going to here. That's the blow-up valve. This is now the reservoir valve. Uh, we have the brakes on the loco are going to go to brake. Fucking control S. Oh, my God, it's bad. That's the one thing. It, it, like, that is bad. Like, it's just, it's, it slows everything down, too, and it's just, it's really obnoxious. You know, again, I don't give them too much shit for the fact that they just made a mistake, but it's like, hopefully they fix it um, soon. Let's see. Um, let's see. We have standard atmosphere barrow, so we need a barrow. So barometer anywhere that's out in the atmosphere, not in an enclosed space. So pretty simple there. That can go right um, here is fine. Let's go right under here just to keep everything together. Okay. So that's the barometer. That will read current barometric pressure. This here is um, loco uh, brake tank pressure. That comes off of this. Right there. All right. And then, let's see, we have the train connectors. So for now, at least, we'll hook them up like this. There's Control-S again. It really is, it's jarring and obnoxious, too. It, it is really bad. Okay. I think that's pretty much got us set there. I think is there anything else I'm missing? I don't think so. I'm gonna have to do some elect, uh, do some uh, elective surgery on that. Uh, some electric surgery on that. Let's see. I'll have to do a compilation of all the times that I swear because of the uh, control less. All right, let's see. Let's uh, hook up electricity. I want to do inf I want to do it without infinite electricity. So we're just currently I'm hooking to the systems here. So braking systems are going all together. I need to add valves forward and back, but we're not there yet. So I don't need to worry about that yet. All right, that's pretty much it, I think. For that, yeah, pretty much that. 
Uh, this valve, but I'll hook that up later. I'll hook it up now. Why not? Uh, let's do that. Okay. Right, let's test it with uh, infant electricity off. Let's make sure we have proper braking here. Let's see if the. I don't think the barometer. Does the barometer need electricity? I don't believe it does. No, it does not. Okay. I didn't think it did. Yeah, Control S sucks, man. It, it's just, it's, I get it, man. It happens. Like, they say, oh, we'll change this thing to make it easier. And then oh, if they're trying to, you know, what they said they were trying to do was um, standardize some of the movement. They did some good things. For example, in add-on editor, you can move now. Before, you couldn't fly around in the add-on editor. That was a good change. But the Control S is a big pain in the balls right now. And, you know, you know, they might not know how people move in the editor. Like, some people give developers shit for not playing their own game. That's their job, man. You're like, you know, how often do people go do their job all day, then go home and do their job as their hobby? Well, you know, they'll, they'll play the game as they need to, but, like, they're not sitting there building all day. They do build. And so, like, they make quick change. Oh, we'll add a quick, you know, oh, we'll add a quick uh, bind for, um, for save, and they don't think about what that actually means, you know? All right, so there's brakes. Brakes seem to be working. I should be able to do train brakes and have nothing happen. Nothing. Okay, good, because that should not be doing anything. Independent brake. Bingo. Okay. So that's working. Beautiful. All right, good. So that is set up. Uh, we're going to go ahead and save this, and then I'm going to grab a test car, and I'll put that on. Uh, what we want to do here is I'm going to add something, then I'm actually going to stick this on the uh, add. So let's go like this. Shit, shit. This is going to be, this is going to take up some space. Should have plenty of space for microcontrollers on here. I'm trying to decide because it's going to be... Two valves and a reed. Let's do that. Yeah, let's just do that. I need one more, too. They had to add three on these. So this is going to be composite input. This is uh, valve panels. Theoretically, I could add a uh, regular valve on there, but it, it just takes up too much space. Not worth it. Um, valve panels. Valve panels. Okay. And then let's see. Um, for a... Okay, forward and rear valves right there. Uh, let's see, one, and uh, it's probably backwards, and i got to fix them, but. <clears throat> All right, forward one, two is rear. This is rear, so let's see. You two. That two. This does not need electricity because of the flip switch, so. Make that two. I did. Okay, good. And this is going to be a forward valve. <coughs> Rear valve. All right, nice. All right, good. Let's uh, save that. grab this panel let's load up this I'm trying to make changes as I go so that it's not 20 light years behind so we'll try to keep good uh, methods with you know Q 
keep fixing things as they need it, but we'll see. All right, so let's go forward valve. These don't need to be connected. Um, uh, the rear valve, does, I don't have valves on them yet, but um, I did a manual here, let's do this. Okay, that's gonna get the forward valve right there. I'll put a rear one on there uh, now. Might as well do it now. <clears throat> I won't do it right now, but I'll do it later. Uh, so that um, eventually when people, you know, use this, they can do it. Compressor, uh, train brake throttle. Okay. Independent brake throttle. Blow up valve. Uh, reservoir, loco. What is it? Res valve loco, okay. Uh, brakes loco, loco brake tank pressure. Uh, standard atmosphere barrow. I don't have one right now. No, I do right here. Okay. Barrow. Um, loco reservoir tank pressure. This is going to be train connectors. And then that is valve panels. So we'll just copy. This one, I'll copy these two for now here. Which one's forward? Trying not to get lazy and just doing this as I go so that I don't friggin' forget. I will forget and then I'll just take, I'll have to do it later, so I might as well just do it now. <clears throat> okay, and then let's hook those in. All right, so that should set that up nicely. Okay, so that's good. Let's save that again. All right, good, so that's set. Let's grab a car that I want to be my standard car. So let's just make a standard car here that's ready to go. Um, <clears throat> it's gonna be very, very simple. It's just gonna be for testing. All right, good, let's uh, make a new car. Oh, come on, just do that. What are we talking? Are we doing 13s? I think we're doing 13s, right? All right, let's do 13s, I think, is what I'm doing here. Okay, um, just do that for now. And then uh, this way, like if I have a base model, I can then go in and, and change uh, everything else I need for other cars later. Tell which direction that's facing from way the Christ under there. All right, do that instead. All 
All right, there we go. That's the... Right, let's go ahead and save this. Let's see. Uh, train, test, car, or new systems. Okay. Grab the D2. That's everything I need. Okay. What are we hitting here? What are we hitting there? Are we good? Let's merge that and see if we're good here. Um, yep, that works. Alright, that looks good. Um, all merged up, we are. Okay. <clears throat> what the fuck happened on this side? Come on, man. I'm trying to do this without having tons of tons of time expenditure here. Let's go. Dude, 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 make my job easy. Come on. Alright, there we go. Okay. What do I have it? Did I set them backwards? I think I now nah, whatever. Two's there, one should be there. Alright, um, let's see. That should be pretty good there. Let's save that real quick. Make sure nothing got done underneath that I don't want it to do. Nope, everything looks good in there. Alright, good. This valve needs to flip. Make sure I didn't go up too high. Um, I might have gone up too high. Let's see. No, it's the same. It's just the, this one, the valve. Why is the valve? Is both valves sticking out? Okay, yeah, they'll flip. All right, we'll flip them. Okay. There we go. Let's fix this. Okay, nice. And then these need to go through to one another. So let's merge those up and then see where I can run them. Try to run them in the center, I'd say. Oh, I'll catch up with chat in a second, guys. Let's see if I can run it all the way down. I might get blocked by the wheels. Nope, it let me do it. Beautiful. That's awesome. All right, good. Nope, it did not. It just made it look like I was going to be able to do it. Then it said, screw you. It said, screw you. All right. I thought it was not going to let me do it. So I was kind of surprised when it looked like it was going to. Real helpful. Thanks, guy. I appreciate when you do that. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. That's ready to catch up with some chat, yeah? 
Yeah, I'm so tired of Control S. It's pretty bad. Thank you, thank you there, Grim Draco. Thank you. No, I'm good. I make all my own stuff, Sergeant. Appreciate it, but I always do my own stuff. The only thing that I use that's not mine is I'll use Basilicious's um, stuff because I don't uh, do Lua much. And I don't really care at the moment to learn. Right, let's see. All right, that is, uh, we're hooked up there for the most part. Okay, good. So let's save this and then I can start hook hooking in the systems. Okay. Slide, please. Slide, slide, slippity slide. Thank you. Let's see. Um, I'm gonna. I'll probably build this stuff up. I think. Yeah, let's build it up. And then I'll just uh, connect it. It's easy enough to build up, so let's just do that. Just make sure you get these off of diesel and just drag them to zeros here. This is res. figure where I have space for this. Um. right there aren't you? oh shit that's all gonna be a pain in the ass there okay that's all right I'm gonna make it work Fit there. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. Shit, 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 and shit. God damn it. Make this tough there, guy, with all the space. I don't have much space in this between the trucks. I'll just move them if they're a pain in the ass. Most of the rail cars are going to be pretty big, too, so it doesn't really matter. But I'll just move it in a second here. It's going to be a pain in the ass. Which appears it is um, destined to do. Um, let's see. Be all right here. Fuck. I can go down though. There we go. All right, I can go down. I got space for down. Yeah. 
there we go. We're good there. All right, so that's gonna air is coming in. It's gonna hit this reserve uh, reservoir tank. It's also gonna go to the back to feed the next system, and then it's gonna come through here. Here is the um, reservoir valve to go into the brake chamber, and then you have the blow off valve, which uh, blows it out. So that's all set. So let's hook that up. Okay. Okay, let's go start hooking. This goes to the valve on the rear, which is gonna be this one. Not the yet guy right here. I can't tell anymore. Yep, that's it. That's gonna go to the front valve. We have the blowout valve, um, which is this one. We have the reservoir valve, which is this one. We have the brake. Uh, that's it, okay. We have the reservoir tank, which should be this one. Tank pressure, we have the standard atmosphere barrel, I need that. Again, this is part of like building a resilient system too, is like if they ever do something where, you know, altitude changes, change the barometric pressure, it's good to have a, a, a barometer on it. I find it unlikely they would do that, but uh, if they did, it would be all set for it, you know. Build the system resiliently, then it works when they change something, you know. If you don't, then it doesn't. Valve rear, valve forward. Okay, let's do pin connectors. Valve panels. Valve panels. That's I screwed this up. Uh, that's train connectors there. Where the hell am I? Uh, here you go. You go there instead, and then this goes here. Okay, and then this you're gonna go to there. All right. Let's see. We'll hook up the electricity because I want this to actually run. So uh, electricity is gonna come through the connectors here too. Locos. We'll see if it has enough residual electricity. We probably have to have some sort of battery in here to make sure that this valve's off correctly. But I think we're good there. Let's go ahead and get this shiz out of here. Okay, where's the other one that is super high right there? Okay. I think we're good on this. All right, let's uh, start launching parts. No, I appreciate it there, Sergeant. I just always use my own stuff. I'm content with the acceleration. This is pretty good, too. That's something I didn't delete. All right, it's right there. I always miss something. All right, we shouldn't be able to push it either. The brakes should be hard on. Why? Uh, let me see. Brakes on? No. Why the fuck are the brakes not on? Probably because it needs electricity. Let's put a battery in here. I'll put a buffer battery in here. Because it's got to, it has to open the valve to drain the air to put the brakes on. Yeah, that was it. Needed that to open the valves. Okay, good. All right, so we should be able to connect now.
All right, we're connected. All right. I don't have an air hose. Um, I can grab one off the um, off the pumps here. All right, so the uh, train brake should still be on. Yep. Okay, and then we need an air hose to hook them up. I have one on me. Okay, good. So we're connected there. We want to grab from here. We want to go to there. We want to go valve. And valve should have uh, train brakes off now. You son of a bitch. Why? Okay, why are you on brakes? Valve. Okay, this valve should be open. Uh, I wonder if I have the valve hooked up on the wrong side. I, yeah, that's what it is. Let's check this one. Let's, so let's close this valve. Let's actually leave that one on. Let's check this, see if this valve's actuated. Could be that simple. Where the hell is it? Where the fuck are you now, guy? Over here? Where's the reg valve here? Reg valve's right there. If this one's open... Nope. Bitch. What the hell's going on here? I gotta, I gotta move the loco forward, too. See what the hell's wrong? <clears throat> Maybe something silly. Um, let's see. Oh, you know what it is? I don't have electricity going through the loco. That's what it is. Okay. That's what it is. All right. I didn't hook up. Maybe I did. I don't know. Let me look. Nope. There's no electricity going through there. So that needs to have electricity going through it. So these two will connect. This will go up to here. All right, there we go. Let's spawn that. So there was no electricity going through, so it couldn't actuate the valves. Come on, jump, you dinky. There we go. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, let's go ahead and we'll grab it. So that should be the problem. Because we're not getting electricity. I could have just thrown in for electricity to figure it out, but it's quick enough to do this way. Oh, no, there's a battery on there. There's a battery on there now. Why the hell? Let's test it real quick. Because I did put a battery on here, so. There's a battery on there now, so it should, um, which side's the valve on? Was it, was it over there? No, it's right here. False. Okay, what's up with this now? Why, why are you going to be annoying? This is, should be, there's a front that should be one. Make sure this is set to two. If it's not, that could cause the problem. Two, okay. Let's make sure these are connected. All right, these two are connected. That's probably what it is right there. Let's spawn it and check it. There we go. That was it. Adam just connected wrong. It should be off now, and we'll test it in a second. Stop. Stop. Why is it moving, though? Why the fuck are you moving? You have no air pressure. Why are you moving? Oh, dear Christ. Stop moving. False. I'm just checking this right now. I don't know why it's moving. That's what I want to know. It should not be moving. That's true. Why are you moving now? That's the next step. Let's figure out what the hell's up with that. Why the hell are you moving here? Um, I don't know why it's, not, why it's moving. It, the tank should be empty. Uh, let's make sure they're connected. Yeah, 
should be low, so the brakes should be on. I don't know why the brakes aren't actuating. Let me make sure everything's connected here. Blow valve, reservoir tank, train wheel brakes, 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 brakes. Okay. There's the train brake, train brake reservoir tank right there. Okay. And this is the brake standard atmosphere barrow reservoir tank. Okay. Train wheels reservoir tank. Um, what's wrong with this picture? No, that's right. It goes up. It's going this way. Okay. Reservoir valve. That should be the blow valve. Why? Why do you have pressure in you? That's what I need to know. This should not be moving. It was fine a second ago. These should be set to ones. What the fuck? Set to zeros. I can't see everything. That's the problem when I get under here. Too cramped. I can't get under here and see. Blue tank small. Um, <clears throat> the yeah, it, the valves should be open though. Where are the valves? Um, gotta, I gotta name them or else I'm not gonna be able to see them. Res tank. This is break. Okay, I can't name the valves unfortunately. Um, let's just delete some shit here so I can crawl under there and see what the hell's going on. All right, see, we should be, should have brakes on. Uh, okay, this is what? I can't fucking see anything. Of course, I paint everything black. It makes it hard to see. All right, so here's the valve going into the tank, going up to the reservoir valve. That should be open. That's true. Then it should go to the brake tank, which should be, it should be empty. So let's check this. This should be at one. And then you should be equalized. Why is, what's the barometer reading? 0.99, why is this tank not at 0.99? Because that's what the problem is. Should be at, where the fuck is it? Where the fuck? Tank pressure only 0.28. Brake should be on. What are you at? You should be the same. You should be the same. Yeah, let's see what's up with this. Did I hook up? Camera two, let's see. Tank pressure. Tank pressure. So brake tank pressure. Yep. Reso uh, standard atmospheres. Okay, barrel. Reservoir tank. Yep. Blowout valve. Yep. Reservoir valve. Yep. Brakes. Okay, what is up? So it's got to be a logic problem. What's going on here? Park break is one, so if we're less than 0.5, which we're at 0.28, so how the hell is that not working? Uh, reservoir tank, standard barometer. If uh, Z reservoir tank, which was 0.28, minus the standard barometer, which was 0.28, which was 0.99, so 0.28 minus 0.99 equals 0.7. Yeah, that's a problem. They should be equalized though, if if the air pressure is equalized. Mm -hmm. I'll increase the variation on this. Um, let's do that. Because what it might be doing is it can't get... See, the problem is these don't leak any air. So let's see if that's the issue. Yeah, brakes are on now. Okay, that just is... a. Uh, okay, that's fine. All right. That just needed a change because... It's the length of the pipes. So what's happening is the air pressure was changing too much because it fills the pipes. And because that's a really long run, there's a lot of pipe there. So that makes sense. Okay. That was the issue. The, the locomotive has much shorter... Um, the locomotive has much shorter um, piping. And so it, it was uh, working fine. So that's all it was. That, that makes sense. Just... Sucks that it was doing it, but it makes sense why it was doing it. Are we going backwards or what's the story here? So we're in business now. 
All right, good, we're connected. I need to hook up my air hoses here. All right, brakes should be off because the train brake is off. Bingo, coming off, nice. All right, there we go, we're in business now. All right, let's go forward. All right, nice. Just like little things like those, if you don't under, like this, I get why people get frustrated because, you know, they might not have a reasonable understanding of some of the physics of this stuff, but it's like the reason why it was easy to like figure that out was, you know, you just have to think that at, the longer your pipes, right, the air is escaping from the tanks and it's going to sitting in the pipes. And so because uh, those valves are not working backwards, the blowout valve, so it's not, it, it was never pressurized. So because it was never pressurized, uh, the volume inside of the air tanks was only at like 0.28. And so um, it doesn't backflow. And so it wasn't backflowing there. So if you don't understand some of those mechanics, it, I understand why it could be, you know, frustrating at that point because you're like, like it should be working. And, and you, you know, then it's, you understand that, oh, it's it's not working because of X, Y, or Z. Let me see. Did I change this sucker? Let's grab the autosave here. And let's save that. Um I don't think I saved it. All right, so this should not move. This will tell me if it's the recent version. Yeah, okay. Let's hook to it. So what I would like to do is I should see the thing that I like in IRL, you'd be able to just let the air line dangle, but you can't do that in game. Uh, we I have to put a storage um, hose anchor. So I'm trying to think, I'd probably just put a storage hose anchor. I don't like to do it, but I kind of have to. Because I can't let the hose just dangle there. Could put a hose locker, but I'm not a huge fan of that. All right, so like, see, the brakes are on. We shouldn't be able to move with that. We can't make sense because the that the brakes are on on that. So until we put air through it, so. I meant to alternate the sides in those, but whatever. I meant to alternate them so that the line goes across like that. So I'm gonna fix that. So I have all the brakes off now. We should be able to move. Up, uh, probably move in the right direction would be helpful. And if I want to take pictures, I can always grab the handle from the uh, from the uh, handbrake to do it. So. Okay, so just the loco brakes are on. So just the independent brake is on, so these should still be at zero, zero, zero. Let's go ahead and actuate the um, the train brake and make sure those are actuating. Should this these should be high enough? Balls cock and ass. Fuck man. All right problem there problem here i don't think i you know what i don't think i hooked up the the um logic from the loco uh to the uh, i think i did actually yeah shit i set set it up to these two christ um that sucks i'm supposed to read the break information out damn it Yeah, we got a bunch on there. Appreciate you guys for doing that. Let's see. What is the issue here? It's not reading out. Um, am I reporting out properly? Don't think I am. Let me look. I'm not reporting out properly. That's why. I don't know. I thought it was. Let me look. 
Right here. It should be where it's... Oh, you know what it is? I never hooked that up, I don't think. I have to think I did, actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, train brake throttle. Train brake throttle. Let's see. Did I hook that up? be easy if I didn't hook that up. But I think I did. I did here. Right here. Train brake throttle. Right here. Let's see what it's set to. Zero to one. Hundred percent sensitivity. Yeah, you bastard. Um, okay. That's hooked up. So channel one. Train brake throttle. Train connectors. Okay. And then what's the read look like on the other side? That's what I need to know. So that's what I don't know at the moment. So then they have enough residual air left in them to uh, fuck. Do we get on? They have enough residual air on there to um, keep let me move. Right, let's go ahead and um, I need to check one of these cars. So let's grab the hose off it so I don't keep losing hoses. And I gotta make, make a couple changes. Okay. All right. So one, I'm trying to remember what side the back is on this side. So this one needs to flip. That's not a big. Uh, which side has the all the bullshit on it? This side, of course. Uh, that's not that's not helpful. Let's go ahead. It's not the end of the world here. Let's just do this. Grab you. Grab you. Grab all of you. Okay. Let's grab you. We'll cut you. That should fix it. What did I miss grabbing? I missed grabbing something, and that screwed me here. Let's go back. Come on. Go back. Grab this that I missed okay okay there we go now that's fine that doesn't need to hook my top what 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 literally what All right, that's fixed now. So it's on the other side. Alrighty. Um, let's see. What the hell's going on here with this? Let's check. Um, these should be going. That's really helpful. Thanks there, flicky camera. Where am I now? Okay. Yeah, I thought I was gonna. Uh, what? what? This is this is fucked up again. All right, that's fucked up. But not right now, buddy. Let's go. This is all ballsed up here, I think. Um, let's see. No, nope, that's train connectors there. That's okay. We'll interlink those. Let's try this now. I already got asked for a workshop link for this. It's like, dude, this thing is so, like, it's a shell. It's a shell of a vehicle. <laughs> Thank you for being interested in it, but please go away for a bit. I'm going to work on it. <laughs> it's like, just because, like, like, so many people, they see a shell and they're like, oh, workshop link, workshop link. It's like, dude, it is so far from being done.
Like it's barely even put together, let alone has functional systems that work. Ah, uh, it's still in reverse. And so the uh, the locos are going to get the cable connection to interlink them too. So I got to put that in. That's on the to do list later. All right, so let's check the um, brakes should be off on this. They are. Let's go test them. Turn them on. Because I might have issues with the way that I'm running this right now. Let's we'll see. Because some daisy chain these sometimes they do not like it, and so I might have to do a different way. Yeah. It's fucking I missed the fucking daisy chain. I gotta go take a quick uh, pee break and I'll be right back here. Let me get that up. All right, nice. So let's uh, figure out what the hell's going on here. So I might have to send it in and in out. Um, it's not the end of the world. Let's do that. Yeah, we'll work on that. Um, I think what's... Let me really quickly look at this UI. <coughs> So come in. This daisy chain in these sometimes does not. It does not like that. And like Rasmus was saying, you get too many. It starts causing problems. It starts to cause problems. So let's change the channel. Let's run on. And let's go like this. Uh, wait, those are bulls, right? Yeah, those are bulls. Let's try something. Let's try to go in here. Okay. Try going in there. Let's uh, let's detach all these really quickly so I can have a clean sl slate to work with here. Stop. Detach from there. What the fuck are you attached to now? That's there. Okay. Uh, let's try to daisy these in a reasonable way. So let's go from here to here. Okay. And then let's go... Trying to get a reasonable daisy chain through here. Um, I'm going to try to do that. That will cut out a node out of here. And then I want to read three on this one. Oh, thanks, guys. Coffee signs up. <clears throat> yeah. 
So I'm, I'm essentially, I'm daisying these up different. The, um, so I'm going from the connector to the panel to the panel. Now I'm going to have to electrify these, which isn't the end of the world. I already did on this one. All right. So, um, and then I'm talking back through that and that will let me put it through the mic. Um, trying to see how I can loop this here. Try run it. Uh, I think I'm going to put it out. Let me try it differently here. Damn it. Okay, uh, back talk there. Okay, perfect. So let's go like this. Then I can I can write the data. So let's see. Um, all right, let's try something here. All right, so that's gonna talk like that. Try that. Let's grab the loco. I forgot you were on there. What? Where, how did I grab this? Get out of there. You're done. You're done. You're drunk. Get out of there. Oh, it's it dropped the battery, and the battery is in the is the main part. That's what it was. The battery is sitting there. Okay, grab you. Try to do these daisies a little bit different here. Run, a, run the daisy through the panel. Sometimes this helps to fix them too. All right, that should be fine. And then this one here is going to write out on three now. It can, it should be able to write out on one. It should be able to write out on one because it's bool, right? Or it's number, and then these are bools. Let's try writing it out on one. See if it freaks. All right, and then uh, spawn that, and then we'll have to run the. Let me check it real quick before I'm, I'm rushing, and that's not never good. That's causes problems. Yeah, that I'm already rushing. That's causing me problems here. Okay, let's get this out of here. Yeah, the numbers and the bulls won't collide. That's why I'm going to do them the same channel. Yep, that's what the thought was. Look at all the turtles that spawn up in here. So many turtles. All right, let's go ahead and grab these. Let's fix that panel now. So they're all looping through the... Um, they're looping through the microcontroller now. Let's see. And then uh, where was the readout? Um... Now this should stay as one. Now make sure you have the right information now. One, okay, that's good. <clears throat> so I wonder if it's an air, it could be an air problem too, air getting trapped in there, I gotta look. <clears throat> now regardless, we're making good progress here, so. You know, it doesn't have the moment. It doesn't coast. It doesn't have the momentum that the real one would have. But that's not the end of the world. I could try waiting it up, see if that works. But okay. All right. So let's see where we're at now. One. Okay. Let's grab a hose. All right. Breaks off. Uh, brakes should be off. What the fuck, man?
starting to get annoyed. That's not reading correctly. through a little bit here. <clears throat> Just trying to send the goddamn brake signal through. Should be able to take it in on this and send it to this panel. This panel should then go communicate with this panel. And then it should come in. And it should come in. I don't know why this isn't looping through. I'm just going to hook everything up again. Alright. Try this. problem is this one's yeah that uh, I'm gonna have to read off of this here to get it to pull the channel off this valve here so that's fine let's try then daisying that back yeah just screw it spawn them together fuck you right on top huh Yeah, just do it. Fuck you. God damn it. You're a pain in the balls, aren't you? Oh, God. It's annoying me. Right, I'm going to put on some soothing synth wave instead of that head kicking shit that I had on. That's not helping the case. <coughs> I don't know why I'm sending back out through there. Let's let's try to yeah, let's try the loco and figure this out. All right. I do have to report out to the connectors because the connectors need the report to be able to read out the train. I don't need to read anything in from these connectors. This needs to send out the signal one to tell the brakes. Okay, that's fine. Done. This here is the valve panels. Valve panels, let's talk valve panel to valve panel. These should communicate and uh, <clears throat> there, that's fixed now. This was wrong. Okay, that goes to there. I can't see these. Okay, let's fix this real quick. All right, so you need to go up to there, all right? And then you need to go to here. All right, that should fix that. All right, let's try that on this. Let's get you out of this barn. I wish, like, I wish I had I could spawn a couple of these right on the tracks next to each other because it's just it's annoying. I'm gonna pull it out every two seconds. takes extra time and try to test some stuff I need to like do the test get back fix it all right kind of at the point of diminishing returns to my brain's kind of farting so all right so next thing I need I need to read in the information from either of the ends so this is where I we start to get a problem and I need to pass it out through either end so I need to read and pass to either one so I need these daisied let's quickly cut you Cut all the shit and let's figure it out. Okay. Cut all the shit and figure it out. All right. 
Go away, go away, go away. All right, so you need to go to here. Let's actually do it this way. You need to go to here. You need to go to the panels. Okay, good. Then the connectors. I need to read in the connectors, and I need to, yeah, so I need to read them in, too. So I need to read these train connectors in and push it out, too. So, so I was trying to be cute and save a node, and I think I'm just causing myself friggin' problems here. Should just be able to read the train connector in. And I should be able to do that. All right, so I should be able to read these train connectors in, and then they should talk to one another. So. God damn it, I just hooked, I just screwed the hookups up again. Fuck me. It's really becoming annoying. It really is. Because they're right next to each other. I keep grabbing the wrong shit. All right. Um, so I need to read the connectors in. So this one here is going to send to this one. And it's going to read up to there. So this should pass the information right through. This one then needs to also pass the information back to this one. Let's save this and see if we can get it to work. Sometimes this works. Sometimes it friggin' doesn't. All right. Breaks. Got allergy attack going on at the same time, which is fun. Uh, fucking train brakes on. There we go. Okay. All right, that should be on one because uh, there's no air in the system. Put some air in the system. With air in the system, this should shut the brakes off. Shuts the air off the system. Now let's test the thing that has been working, which is put the train brakes on. Do we get train brakes? Please work or I'll cry. There we go. Thank Christ. We finally got it going. This is this type of stuff that you beat, kick your head in. How's it going there, Arian? How are you? 008. All right, good. So we're making progress here. I want to get this uh, brake system licked. So this is going to be these two things. Essentially, what I'm going to do is go back, and I will um, then take the panels, and I will just swap them out for the example once I've got it where I want. Let's grab another car and test it with another car. We'll go train brakes on. Train brakes on. Stop us. Gorgeous. All right, we'll leave the train brakes on. Let's go grab one of these. Now grab another hose. We're running out of hoses here. <clears throat> I'll probably put a storage on there. I think that's what I'm going to do. Put a storage anchor on there. All right, so train brakes are now off. Let's go in reverse. Let's get in and hook to that. All right, good. We're connected. Let's go ahead and we will stop. All right, brakes should be 100%. Brakes are 100%. But how did I stop us? Did I stop us with the train brakes? I think I did. Let me double check. Stopped us with the train brakes. I did. Train. Nope. I did not stop us with anything. All right. So we should have a train brake of zero. Let's connect. All right. So these should be coming off now. Bingo. Now let's go hammer them on. Yeah, I, I wasn't taking. I was trying to rush and like, you know. Like I've said before, slow is fast. By rushing, all I'm doing is like I'm making mistakes. Slowing down, I start thinking through the logic a little bit better. There we go. Gorgeous. That's working. All right. So like Rasmus said, this could run into a problem if I attach too many cars. I don't know where the limit's going to be, but we'll see. 
for the most part, it's working. All right, there we go. Train brakes are working. Let's go walk through them and check. So they should be all be at their max. There we go. Still climbing even. So again, this is all based off air pressure now. So they're all air pressured. All right, let's read some chat. All right, Arion. Yeah, it's not a good t good game to rush. It's just like I've I gotta leave in like half an hour, so I'm like uh, trying to hammer it through. So let's go ahead and let's set up the the hangers for this, where I want to store stuff. Uh, this is always kind of annoying, because like I should be, you know, the way it would work is you you just let the hose dangle, and so I can't let the hose dangle, so I have to have a storage on it. So I could, let me see where I want to put it. So I want to paint block the bottom, so I'm trying to think. Rake, line, storage. Should say what it does first. So, storage, brake line. All right, there we go. Right above is pretty good, I think. Okay, there we go. All right, next is going to be the communication system for the actual loco. So on the front, are we in the front of loco? We're in the front of loco. So let's go. So this is uh, break air. This is gonna be interlink. Locomotive. We'll do multi-link. Multi-link. Okay, locomotive multi-link. Put a hyphen in there. There we go. Okay. And then this is going to get pick you, copy you. You're going to go in the back. All right. So that'll be the multi link to link the locos. All right, let's work on that. That should not be too challenging here. But essentially, what we're going to do is... Um, I think the best way to do it here. So what we could do is we'll do, let's see. Um, let me get rid of the stuff I don't need. So that's gone. Alt, uh, nope. I don't need an alternator output anymore. Battery, good. Key starter, clutch, fuel manifold, air manifold, RPS engine, panels. Good, 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 good. That's all set. I don't want to move anything. Uh, let's go.
Multi-link in, multi-link out, I'm thinking. And so essentially what we'll do is if we look here, we have the key. All right, so the key is, uh, that's panels I'm grabbing. Let's grab the multi-links I just made. Right. So essentially what we'll do is I think we'll work it off the key that, uh, no, that won't work. That should work. Yeah, so what we'll do is um, <clears throat> whatever, whatever one is on will control the other two. So we have a key here. So what we'll do is on the right, We'll write for the multi-link. Uh, channel one will be the key. And now we'll go to the multi-link here. All right. And then what we'll do is, um, where are we getting throttle and bullshit? Um, Actually, all we really need to do is start them, frankly, because the um, the generator is going to automatically do what it needs to do. The generator is set, so they can even work independently. All we really need to do is is run them. Yeah. And so what will happen is uh, we'll write out the key on, right? Yeah, so we'll write out the key on, and then if the key is on, let's do a numerical switch box. No, we don't even need a numer numerical switch box. We need a regular switch box. So we'll, so what? We'll, yeah, pretty much the systems, the systems all set up because it's diesel electric. So it's, all we have to do is start the system, and all it does is it runs the engine to do that. Um, oh, we're gonna have to do throttle outputs to the, uh, yeah, throttle outputs to the motors. That's not a big deal. I could put a motor output on here. So I'm trying to think if I want to run a multi-link panel. Let's run a multi. Let's make a multi-link panel. Let, let, stop that, please. Let's do a multi-link panel, um, and that will. I think that'll work. Yeah. Yeah. So let's uh, quickly make a multi-link panel. I think this is going to be probably the best way to do it. <clears throat> I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. Let me paint something, get a little bit of palette cleanser with my brain. Yeah, so a couple ways I can do this. Because that will run the engine. All the all the engines need is the multi-link. So, if, for example, if a key is on in any of the other systems, it will then default to those. It will turn everything on. So that essentially turns all the uh, generators on. The thing we need to multi-link mostly is brakes and the... Um, Brakes and the throttle. So let's make, uh, yeah, brakes and throttle. So let's make a multi link panel, or else I'm going to have to add this to each panel. And so I think a multi link panel is going to be better. So let's do that. Multi-link. All right. And so what we need to do is let's take in. We need an in and out on composite for the multi-link system. So we'll do composite input. Multi-link in and out. All right. Then the values we need are going to be, we need, um, let's see what we need. We need to have number input. That's going to be. Throttle. We need to have number input. Um, that's going to be independent brake. Uh, 
Independent Brit. Wow. Train break. Okay. So those three need to come in. Um, the we're gonna have to control the key, which will be in the. Um... See, I'm trying to decide. Do we want to run key from here? Actually, you know what we can do? I'll start each locomotive independently, right? Like I would in Derail Valley. You start each locomotive, and then as long as the multi-link's on, all they're controlling is the shuttle, <clears throat> or the reverser, rather, the throttle, the brakes. So that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, so let's do that. So I also need something for the panel in and out. Um, Okay. This will this will do the reverse. Uh, actually, we don't even need the reverser. We need the reverser off the main one. So let's put the reversers in neutral. I'm trying to come up with a strategy for this. All right, and then we need three out. And then let's see if I can get this to function how I want. So what's this? That one is throttle. Let's see. Uh, let's see, this is electric motors. Because the uh, the diesels are going to just run to maintain battery. And so as we uh, burn down battery, all of them are going to automatically throttle up. So that's not a big deal. Um, let's see. Independent brake. Okay. Because what I'm trying to do is I don't want to again I, I don't want to make this so that it only works on one vehicle. I want to make it so that I can easily put this on other vehicles. So by putting them all in one thing, it's going to make it so all the panels have to be the same, which is annoying. By doing it this way, hopefully they'll all uh, I can take these panels, put them on a different type of locomotive. That's the goal. All right, so let's see. How do I trigger this? Um, so only, so all of them are going to be set to zero. So the brakes are going to be set to zero. The throttle is going to be set to zero, except on one. So as long as they're all zero, we should be able to do an add. What is this Discord message I have here? Okay. Uh, yeah, so that, um, I should be able to just add them. Okay, yeah, that should work. All right, so multi-link will come in, and multi-link will go out. So what we'll do here is, do we even need multi, yeah, we need multi-link in. All right, so let's see. Um, we'll take this, and then we'll read um, one, two, three. So we, what we want to do is read one, two, three. Because I want this to work, so I'm like, for example, like one of the locomotives, if I do a DH4, will be hydraulic. So that's going to have different panels. So I can't make them work that way. But they're all going to have essentially your throttle input, which is how fast you want to go. Um, you're going to have your uh, independent brake, your train brake. So the main things you need. And then the systems are going to run themselves. The engine will rev up to produce more hydraulic or more electricity. And so that will keep each system independent. So let's do two. Now let's do three. Okay, so one, two, three. And what we'll do here is we'll take that. So this will be the multi-link. And then what we'll do is we'll do a function. You bastard. Um, let's do... Let's do this. Oh, come on, man. Get precise here, guy. All right, that will go like that. So that is one is going to be the throttle. Two is going to be the independent brake, and three is going to be the train brake, like so. All right, good. And then these are just going to add. If I grab the wrong function one more time, there we go. X plus Z. 
All right, so by adding them together, uh, the, the locos you, that you don't want to control, like, for example, let's say I want to run from the front loco of a, of a gang of three, okay? And so you want to run from the front loco of a gang of three, okay? So uh, locos one, two, and three all have zero throttle input, zero uh, independent brake input, and zero uh, train brake input, okay? They're all off. So then what I do is I get in loco, loco one, and I start increasing the throttle. So what it's going to do is it's going to take the throttle from the multi-link, uh, loco one, and it's going to add it to the other two locos. So zero plus one is now one in all three locos. You bring it back, and now you stop, and you, okay, I want to go in the back loco. So what do you do? Make sure they're all zeroed out. You go in the back loco. You start increasing the throttle in the back loco. What happens? They all work. All right, and now it doesn't matter because since they're going to the electric motors, um, the shuttle no longer counts because it's going to, uh, that this, we might have issue with this. I got to read this, but, um, it, no, it's going to be an ad. So that's fine. That should work. All right. That should work. An ad should work. As long as I set the locos up correctly, which again, as long as you follow the instructions, you should be fine. So this should work. And this, because I'm trying not to have any interference with the micros and try to make it work on any vehicle. So that should work. Um, no, nope, that just fucked me right there. Come on, dude. There we go. And then this goes there. All right. All right. So now that's like that. And so what we're going to do is, let's see. And then I need to broadcast out the. Yeah, so I'm going to broadcast out the addition on these. Okay. And they'll be clamped out. So um, what we'll do is clamp these. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, that should be fine. Oh, thank you. Yep. Yeah. How's it going, Turtle? Yeah, I do pretty well in Logic. It, I've got a lot. I've got six thousand hours, so that's that's a lot of it. It's just a lot of practice. Um, all right, so that's good. So these are all clamped out. That way we're not getting over revs, essentially. Now what we want to do is we want to do rights. And we want three rights, uh, one, two, and three. And since they're adding, we shouldn't have any problems stacking them, I don't think. Mushe, this, this could have a, an issue. We'll see. Got to check it out and see what we're going to do here if this causes a problem. So that's your right. Read out channels one, two, three. Read it. Read three channels one, two, three. Okay, let's see if we can loop that. Not, we might be stepping on channels is the problem. I'll have to look. But let's try some. Let's try it. And then, like I said, my brain's starting to get thin on this. I probably do this shit. All right. So multi-link. Um, let's go. So let's see, you need to talk to you. I'm gonna grab the right ones too. Let's grab this one. You need to talk to you. You need to go up to here. And then you need to go down back to here to loop them. All right, let's save this and see if I can get it to work. Grab the, this one. All right, let's spawn it. Might have some stepping on channels, so I got to play with it. But um, trying to see if I can get this to work as simply as possible. So we come in, fire up loco one. The shuttle really it does not matter. Um, it does. I have to. I have to do a different way of doing this here. So the shuttle is going to matter. Uh, the, I keep on the shuttle, the reverser. But the reverser is going to matter. Oh, I, f I was wondering what we clicked into. We clicked into cars. Okay. Let's grab another one. Because the, the cool thing with the way that the generators work is all they care about is maintaining max battery. So 
Uh, once everything's interlinked, all the batteries are going to be interlinked. And so let's say we're down 20%. All the generators are going to automatically rev up to maintain 20%. You know, whatever it takes on 20%. So that part's easy. The issue then becomes uh, pushing the, out the right uh, values. So i got to test those right now. And then i got another 15 minutes. i got to go. But yeah, so it made some good progress on that. The brake system is really cool. I think the brake system took a little bit of tuning, but the brake system's working fantastic. It's all essentially, uh, you know, it's pneumatic mechanical. It's all mechanical. It's going to work because the mechanics work, and um, the gamification of it's pretty pretty minimal, you know. And, and so, like, if you guys saw yesterday during the multiplayer stream, I was having hydraulic problems, and I could fix the problems realistically because the systems were set up realistically. We didn't connect, did we? No, we did. I just didn't hear it. Okay, so now I want to set these all up. So the throttles need to go to zero. Reverser is going to go to neutral, zero, zero. Leave the engines on. Okay, next one, we're going to set up the next one. I'm going to drive from the front loco. Zero, zero, neutral. Okay. All right, next thing we're going to do is let's start going. All right, we're pushing. I want to check this one, see what it's doing. I, I'm not going to be able to read out my motors here. Um, I don't have a motor read on here, so I can't tell. Let's, God damn, I got to pull these back. That sucks. All right, uh, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to string these together in the thing to test them. All right, where's the last one? Let's get the last one here, and then we'll um, go ahead and check it out. All right, so what I need to do is I, I need to read my motors right now, so let's take a pinky. What did I just delete? Right, let's grab this pinky. All right, so this is where I think the issue is going to come in. Uh, in order to make this work, I need to not read out motors uh, from the throttle. I need to read out the motors from the electric motors. So where are we sending to electric motors here? Electric motors come off of the drive panel. Okay. So instead of the throttle, I should be re going from the drive panel. Uh, so this should go from here to... I didn't hook it up either. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Shocker. All right, this should go to throttle because this can this controls the uh if it's negative or positive we're going forward and backwards, so this controls the um the reverser. Okay. Independent brake. It's independent brake here. There's independent brake. Independent brake right here. Um let's see. Train brake. Again, my brain is on the farts right now. And then we're going to go from train brake. Uh, where are you going? You're going right there. So instead of going there, you now come to there. Uh, independent brake, you go here. You now come to there. Uh, you are now electric motors, which uh, the electric motors now go down to the electric motors. Which, there's the control S. Thanks, buddy. Thanks for that update there, guys. Appreciate that one. That's real helpful to us all. Electric motors. All right, let me try to move without pressing the S key. Okay, that's in. So that should work uh, the, because you have to consider the hierarchy, how this is moving. All right, so let's save this. This is pretty reasonable where, where we're at here. All right, now I'm just going to do, I'm going to duplicate them in here um, and do a test. I can get two in here. So that two is fine for the test. All right. All right. They are joined. All right. They're joined by that. All right. So let's go ahead and let's do uh, hook this in. So we want to go from storage to the. Okay. This is going to be a problem where. Uh, okay. So one. So like the front set does not need a storage. So let's. Uh, so the backs are going to get storage and the fronts are not. So it'll be like this. This will be gone. And you'll go like this in the back and then hook. Okay, that's hooked. And then air pressure, we go from storage. 
Uh, same deal here. So this one can be thrown away. See you, baby. And then um, this one goes now storage to here. All right, good. So that's set up. We want to open the valves. Now the brakes can operate. All right, we're good. All right, now we want to get in this one. <clears throat> and we want to turn it on. Now we don't want to touch anything. We're going to come in here and we want to turn this one on. Hopefully I hooked up the goddamn connector right. <laughs> okay, turn this one on. Now I'll start adding. Uh, we need to go forward. Start adding the throttle. All right, now we need to see if that one is actually. I did it. I didn't hook in the the whole reason why I added the pink buttons, pink gauges. All right, so from the pink gauge is what I want to do. Uh, so what I want to do here is from the. Um, so this is what's actually commanding the motors. So this needs to go to this pink dial that I just put in there that I forgot to hook it into. Right there. All right, good. Let's spawn that. All right, so again, we'll do... Uh, let's... Yeah, I'll, I'll fix it later in the other version. Let's throw that friggin' flashlight out of the way, too. We'll get rid of that, too. All right. So this one here goes from storage to connect. Storage to the connection. Valve valve all right good get out of my way there all right let's get in there let's uh we want to fire this up and touch nothing all right so the motor's showing zero as they should we're coming here all right so we should get fucking nothing what Oh, the reverse is not on. There we go. <laughs> All right, so let's see if that reads 0 .7, 0 0.17 in the rear now. Beautiful. All right, so they're interlinked. So let's go ahead and we want to do brakes. I didn't put a brake indicator, but we don't need it. Independent brakes go full on. Ah, uh, shit. So it, it should work in either loco. That's the kind of the, the whole thing of it. I The one I don't want to run, I should leave on zero. So let's go like this. Independent brake to zero. Or for 100%. So both brakes should be on at this point. 0.84. Yep. Beautiful. All right, interlink is working as intended. So as long as I leave the ones that are supposed to be the, this is not my terminology, but the slaves are supposed to be left on zeros, and the master here is supposed to be the one that actuates it. We now have locos that communicate. So that is all set. Um, beautiful. So... Because this is reading the actual localized motor uh, response. All right, we're hooked to the cars now. Let's make sure everything works. So uh, let's do the independent brake. All right, we'll leave the independent brake on. Let's again check the independent brake back here, which controls just the locos. Yep, that's on. All right, let's grab an airline here. So airline here. Valve, valve, all right, those are all connected, okay, good, so the brakes, so the train brakes should be zero on all these, because they're all, because I have the handle closed, let's go ahead and we'll go train brake full, and now the train brake on the car should be at full, piss and shit, why are you not running now, did I forget to open the valve? Nope. All right, so something's up with the air. I got to fix that. But the independent uh, system is working. Why is that not working? How's it going, JP? Now, we'll see you later there, Alistair. Are you leaving us? All right, so let's see. What is up with the brakes again? We're having a brake problem again. Why? That should be that should be sending out from this one to here. Why is that not running that right? Huh. Interesting. <clears throat> so at least the I've got the let's let's go under here and see what the hell's going on here. This valve, are you open? You're you're open. Valve's open. Okay. 
So the reservoir is full. Uh, variable valve. So I have this on, right? Let me check. Let me shut off the independent brake and leave the train brake on. Train brake is on 100%. So that should be putting on these. And I got nothing. So what should we be doing? We should be, we should have the blowout valve should be closed. That's closed. And the, this one, so it could be an air pressure problem. I got to, if it's that, oh my God, I threw my flashlight and everything flack under here. That does not helpful. Right. Reservoir should be, reservoir, let's see what the brake tank is. Okay, the brake tank is currently, if the brake tank is this low, the brake should be on. Yeah, the brake should be on. Why the fucking brake's not on? Okay, I got an idea. I might have fixed it on the other build, so uh, let's not play with that too much. We're doing, let's focus on the one thing we're supposed to be doing, which is che checking the um, interlink system. Okay. And then let's get you. So you're disconnected. Brakes should be on. They're fucking not. This could be an old set, too. I don't know how long this has been sitting out here. Um, so I might have fixed it on the other one. We'll check it real quick. But the interlink appears to be working fine. This is where all my shit is here. There we go. All right, let's grab the latest car. Because that could be an old car, too. Um, right here. Let's go hammer into this and see if this is connected. All right, so the interlink's working. The interlink should work with... Um, you know, again, like I'm trying to set it up where it works with any sort of system, uh, you know, so I can put the same multi-link on the, um, all right, what are we doing here? We're doing nothing. That's not good. Why? Should be reading a negative value. What's up with that? Why? Okay, we're having problems again. What's up with this now? Why are you not reading on that? Let's try to go forward again, see if a forward will work, because it could be an issue with that. Yep, so it's a forward reverse issue. All right. Um, it's a forward reverse issue. Let's play with that. I'm going to go back to the loco and let's uh, focus on one thing at a time, seeing that one thing is not fixed yet. Let's go ahead and get you guys cleaned up. Okay. Let's go ahead back to the loco. Loco, so the interlink seems to be working except for reverse. Let's grab the DE2. Let's make the corrections I wanted. So we'll make the rear one. Let's see. So we'll make the front storage for air, and we'll make the rear storage for interlink. Okay. So you're going to store the interlink back here, and you're going to store the air up front. Correct. Okay. So we'll do that. Now we have our storage situation figured out. Okay. Don't do that, please. Do that. All right. So that is done. That need to be done. That's done. All right. Good. All right, so this is the, let's do drive control system. All right, that's the reverser control. It runs off the panel. What is this? Let me see. All right, so this shows us, this is going to show the, um, the position. So we have 1 and 11 that runs this. That goes forward back. That works fine. That's going to then take this, okay, throttle input here. That's going to, okay, that takes the throttle and that inputs it through. It's either going to be X. What's going on here? This is a mess. Oh, no, that's zero uh, for neutral. That's neutral. That is, okay, neutral. That's one. That's negative one. Make sure that's correct. Yeah, okay, good. That goes to motors, all right. All right, so that goes to motors. The motors are then going to go to the interlink throttle. Okay, and then that is going to go to the electric motors. So that is going to... Ah, this is why. 
Okay, so the electric motor should go to negative one. That would be why. All right, so that's the problem right there is that that was clamped at zero, so that was preventing reversal. So that's fine, that works. All right, save that, that should be good. That is figured, all right, good. Um, let's see why my goddamn brakes are still not working. Because they should have been on. Um, let me see what the story is. All right, let's see. Um, we had a problem with the brakes where, um, so the the brake reservoir was at 0.99. That should have been low enough for it to trip the uh, the empty park brake. Uh, this is it right here. That high threshold's way too high. Um, no, this should be all right. So what is it doing? It's taking the um, the reservoir tank minus the um, standard barometer. So let's say it was 0.99. Uh, 0.99 minus 0.99, of course, is 0. And then it's from 0 to 1. That's taking the absolute value, so it's always absolute. It's always positive. And let's say there's a differential. So let's say it's 0.28 uh, minus 0.99. That's going to be negative 0.71, which becomes a positive 0.71, which should trip the brakes to go into their fully on state. Let's see why the hell that's not working. All right, uh, let's check it. It looks fine. I don't know what the deal is. Um, let's just spawn it in and look at it. Uh, I don't have my flashlight anymore, which fortunately everything's dark and I can't see shit if I don't have that. Yeah, it is right there. Okay. All right, um, so we have the... <clears throat> Should be the brake tank is at 0.28. Reservoir tank is at 0.28. So that's just what these tanks will start with. That's fine. Um, and then we need to see. So what should happen is the variable valve. This should be open for the... This is the dump valve. Yeah, that's the dump valve. That should be open. Why is this... Okay, these are one ways. That's the reason. <clears throat> that's the problem is these actually do act as one ways. We don't get backflow. All right, let's make sure these are on uh, 100%. Yep. Um, I can run this with diesel. So here, let's... <laughs> I'm going to put diesel in the system. Actually, you know what? Let's do this. This will be actually fun. Let's do a testing kit here. I'm going to... Yeah, I'm going to go in a minute here. Just give me one more minute. Um, yeah, I should probably go. Let me do. Let me quickly do the testing thing here. I'll show you what I'm gonna do. This is actually kind of cool. Um, I did some of this yesterday when we had um, issues uh, with the hydraulics. Is you can actually you can actually utilize real systems to make it work. So for example, um, let's take a let's take a tank. Let's make it uh, yellow. We'll fill it with air. Okay, and then I'm gonna go. All right. So here we go. We've got this. We take. It's just full of air now. Um, let's take a pump. All right, what are you, are you in? In. All right, let's do a fluid port on there. Again, th this, the manual parts, I love the manual parts. They were fantastic. All right, that's good. And then what we want to do is we'll grab a, a hose anchor like this. All right, so now we can store and pressurize some air in there. And then what we want to do is go to here like this. And so what I should be able to do is I should be able to release the brakes. So the brakes are on, right? And what we want to do is I'm going to open the valve. And now I'm going to try to push these, uh, release the brakes. That might not do it. We'll see. Uh, I'm going to do it real quick because I think the, the dump valve's open. Let me see. See if I'm filling up the reservoir real quick. Ah, uh, there's the res. There's the brake tank. Here's the res. The problem is the um, this valve. 
this valve here is, is likely open. Nope, that's closed. Okay, so this valve is closed. And this one is running off the reservoir tank. So I should be able to fill this with air here. All right, see, we're building. We got some pressure in there. That's probably as high as I can get it with the hand pump because the uh, electric pump goes to 11. And then so the reservoir tank should be, if I can find the fucking thing right here. Why is that still low then? can't tell all right let's pull it in and see what's up maybe i did i did move it around a couple times i could have screwed it up so all right let's check this hose here okay that's connects into the valve that's fluid out going in the reservoir tank All right, I'm just going to quickly test this, and then the guts go turn on infinite electricity, and I'll do it. So I'm going to just do external pressurization of the system like this. Because the, the thing is, the, the reason the brakes are on is because there's no air pressure in the brake reservoir. And once it gets too low, it springs the brakes on, like spring brakes, and a tractor trailer. And then... Um, if I if I add pressure, it should release the brakes because they now have enough air pressure to uh, keep them off. Let's see. Valve open. Let's make sure that valve opened here. It's right um, here. All right, the valve's open. Let's go ahead and pump. That's pumping. Brakes should come off. Brakes came off. Okay, good. So that's fine. I'm going to save this as my uh, kind of testing example. So let's save that and then um when i you know, i'll work on it some tonight i uh, i might save it for you guys so i can work on it tomorrow um i have an appointment tomorrow so i won't be able to stream very long tomorrow but um but yeah so good good progress today we got the train brake system in so for those who came late uh came in with a realistic train brake system that is actually set up to you utilize actual air pressure using the pressure mechanics of the pressure update where we can actually have pneumatic brakes that are based on the air pressure in either the reservoir tank or the brake tank itself. And uh, they work realistically like they should. And the, the uh, you know, the locomotive feeds the air to all the, all the, uh, all the cars so that it works realistically. So the cars closest to the, uh, to the locomotive are going to respond more quickly than the cars further away from the locomotive. And that way it works realistically. And so you need air from the locomotive. You need to pump using a compressor in the locomotive. If you disconnect from the locomotive, the brakes will come on on the car. So you can just detach and they're good to go. Uh, worked on the interlink system. So the multiple locomotives will control each other. So that you can have a string of three and one locomotive will control all three. And then, um, you know, you have to actually hook up your air. And it works realistically, too, so that in the event that I get in a pinch, for example, what I could make is a small battery-powered pump, or I could do a hand pump, and I could actually pump air into the, uh, into the uh, car, and it would release the brakes. And that way, let's say you needed to move a car, what do you do? You take a compressor, you pump up the brakes, the brakes release, you push the car, you then disconnect it. Once you disconnect it, it pisses out the air, and then uh, the brakes are on again. So uh, kind of a cool system, working really well. I'll probably save any work on this. What I, we have a bunch of, I have a bunch of work I need to do in the mining vehicle. So if I play again tonight, I might do that. And then I'll save for you guys because this seemed like it was interesting to some of you. So uh, that worked out well. Again, congratulations to all the winners for Juliet. I will be working, you know, I'm trying not to do just building in the career build series here. I'm trying to go back to some career gameplay as well. But I kind of want to get this wrapped up, so I will be working and using people's uh, ultralights. But uh, when we go do some missions, probably fly around. Maybe if I need to go base to base, we'll use them. Uh, so we'll do that. So uh, thank you guys. I appreciate everybody who hung out on uh, on Twitch today. You know that helps me out. I'm trying to get affiliate, so I need to get my average up. Uh, thank you for everyone who followed me on Twitch. 
Uh, that got me over the 50 followers I need, and the average should be really good today. So I appreciate you guys for that. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you're new and you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing. And we'd love to see you in the Discord, so check the link uh, in the description for the Discord link. Uh, you can hang out, show your uh, any pictures you builds there. You can discuss other games. Uh, if you guys like the video, please consider liking the video. I appreciate that. And uh, we will see you guys in the next one. We'll roll credits. See ya.